Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Da, la, la. It's almost getting, I feel like it's getting too predictable at this point. Uh, yeah, do you I mean, mean in that you've done it every episode for the last 50 some? I need to sunset this bit. Well, you no, can't say, you actually no, can't we say that. We, cut we made that. promises. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I want a munch squad. I want to munch squad. You could start doing it at different times in the podcast instead of right after. I need this though because it helps me cut. You know what I mean? This is like a I it puts me on its back and it helps me carry me through. What do you want from me, pilot? I just this isn't funny. I just oh, wanted good. to let you know how desperate thing, things have gotten in this in the chicken sandwich wars. I just <gasps> wanted to update everybody. The pilot flying J is getting into the fucking the gas room. station chain. The, the gas station chain for truckers flying J is getting into wow. it. We're entering the chicken sandwich game, gearing up for increased summer travel by introducing several new innovative food options. They're gonna surprise and delight our guests, says a person that works at Flying J. Our awesome menu, including our newest Southern and spicy chicken sandwiches, make pilot Flying J the ultimate stop to fill up a great food. Here's the reason you go to eat at a Flying J. Because you get off at uh, an exit and the Wendy's says 0.5 miles and you're like, ah, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> that's too far. I'll probably get lost. I'm going to fly J. You're not lured in by a menu item. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, Pepsi has created Pep's Place. Wait. A fast beverage. Say that restaurant. one no. more. Say it again. Say it again slower. Pepsi, Pepsi yes. creates yes. Pep's Place. <laughs> Pepsi creates Pep's Place. Just keep, stop, fast, stop. I need you to keep saying those three words over and over to me again until I fall asleep. Can you say them gently, like ASMR, and then I'll get a quick little bit of sleep? Pepsi creates Pepsi creates Pep's place. Pep's Pep's place. Pepsi creates Pep's place. P E P apostrophe S place. P E P apostrophe Eps place. Pep Do you guys? Do you guys? Do you guys know? Do you guys know the original name of Pepsi? I I just think it's fun. We talked about it on Sawbones once. The original name of Pepsi is Brad's oh, Drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet they're kicking themselves now because Brad's Place is a better name. Yeah, eighteen ninety. Yeah, if it was called Brad's Drink, still. God, it's so funny. Brad's Drink. Hey, who made now this? I'm renaming it to Pepsi. <laughs> Me, I made it. My name's Brad. <laughs> it's my drink. Okay, so Pep, 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 Pepsi creates Pep's Place, a fast beverage restaurant. <laughs> I think you said bad. This is I think so, you said this one is bad fridge, which is also strong. <laughs> this one is like among the more Orwellian <laughs> that we have <laughs> encountered in this something. segment. Few things are more agreed upon than our collective unapologetic love of food. Cheesy, juicy, or <laughs> saucy. Stop. Here's different ways food could be. Take it from us, Pepsi. <laughs> Trust us, we know about foods. So it's, uh, it's um our so many of our favorite eats are enhanced with pair with an ice cold Pepsi Cola. To reinforce this, the Pepsi brand is upending what we expect in the food delivery Shit. world with today's launch of Pep's Place, where the cola comes first. Oh. This inventive fast beverage restaurant turns the traditional ordering process on its head. Okay. Consumers are invited to first pick their Pepsi beverage of choice. Do they have Coke products? I assume they don't. They talk, okay. which then prompts curated food items based on that beverage. Oh, hit the fuck out. To enhance the overall meal experience, Pep's Place opens today in select locations around the country for delivery only through pepsplacerestaurant.com and major food aggregators like, uh, well, none of them paid to be mentioned on this episode, so I won't. So what you're saying is the process is I would get on pepsplace.com and pick Pepsi, I guess, Pepsi. And it would be like, based on the fact that you ordered a Pepsi, here's some food. Hey, there's no reason for you to get ahead of me, but I'll walk you through the entire oh, process. Thank you. Come with thank me. You. Here, 
get, let me hit you with my shrink ray and put you in my pocket. We're going to Pep's place. <laughs> You're looking for a bold cola profile and lemony citrus notes of Pepsi Zero Sugar? Well, that pairs gracefully with our crisp and tangy Caesar, chicken Caesar salad. Craving a tropical splash of Pepsi Mango? The fruity and floral notes complement the perfect blend of mild chilies found in our buffalo wing sauce. Here's how you order. First, step one, you select from a bevy of Pepsi beverages, and then it lists, I shit you not, nine of them. Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Pepsi Zero Sugar, Pepsi Real Sugar, Pepsi Wild Cherry, Pepsi Zero Sugar, Wild Cherry, Pepsi Mango, and Pepsi, Pepsi Zero mango Sugar flavor, Mango. Sugar Flavor, Sugar Flavor, Diet Pepsi, Pepsi, <laughs> Pepsi Mango, Cherry there's, Mango, there's Mango a, Soda, Pepsi Soda. There's Piet, there's, there's Piet Dempsey. There's yeah. Piet Dempsey, Sweet, Sweet, Cold Pepsi, and Pepsi Patrick Cold. Patrick Dempsey. There's Dempsey's and Peepsies and Puppies <laughs> and Chocolate, chocolate cher, uh, Cherry Mango, Mango Sugar Zero. Choose from, and then you'll choose from a menu curated from with mouthwatering food pairings from your cola <laughs> choice. And then it lists food, cheeseburgers, buffalo wings, Cajun chicken sandwiches. You get the idea. Chicken sandwich wars raging on even at Pep, 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 Pep's place. Then you fill out the meal with delectable sides, including mac and cheese, broccoli, and Lay's chips. Huh. All right. Here's, here's, <laughs> My favorite line in the whole press release. <laughs> Pep's place will be open every day for the next 30 days. <laughs> what an insane, what an insane way of describing uh, your restaurant's availability. When's your restaurant open every, every day. day for the next 30 days? <laughs> this is. Can I, I rarely do this because I want, I always want it to be a special surprise, but I did load up the menu and I, I do, I am confused about if I, do you have access to Pep's place in Austin? No, there's one in El Paso, which I'm pretty sure the Pepsi would have gone quite flat by the time it reached my house from El Paso. But like you can get any, it doesn't suggest a food. I, they have six items and then they have nine pepsis and no matter which pepsi you choose you can get one of the six i want it to be restrictive like i want it to be like i would like the pepsi mango zero sugar uh with the louisiana style chicken sandwich and have the website be like no because those two don't go together you can't have that i mean i know it seems like a small complaint but like it is the entire point of the entire fucking thing it's the, like if that doesn't right um the now, this press release didn't tell me about this, but I started thinking about it. And like, there is no way that Pepsi is springing up, um, like restaurants, no. right? No, I mean, because they're Pepsi. About, right. So I, cause you've, you've seen this, uh, phenomenon on, on like, uh, uh, all the, the different food delivery apps. Right. I don't know if you guys have seen these. All of a sudden a restaurant opens up. And you're like, well, I've never heard of of this right. place, and it's like, well, that's because it's just yeah. chilies. Oh yeah, it's, it's just chilies it's pretending like a to ghost be. restaurant. Yeah, ghost restaurant. Right. We we've discussed this this subject. So I was like, this can't this can't be just like McDonald. So have you guys heard of a chain called Famous Dave's? Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So did you say Famous Dave's or did you say Pep's Place? <laughs> My internet the, broke the, up, and I, it's the decision is basically <laughs> is is I, what I'm saying is it is a um there is no distinction. Pep's, Pep's place, place is a Pep's flat place. circle. Pep's place is a different way to order from Famous Dave, awesome. which would have been a better headline so for the great. <laughs> but Famous Dave's has a way bigger menu than Pep's place. This is well, yeah, but Pep's Place is a smaller restaurant that is in the corner of Famous <laughs> Dave's. I'm, is what we're <laughs> d supposed to imagine. They don't mention, by the way, in the press release. They do not say this is the food from Famous yeah. Dave's. That's how fa that's how Famous Dave is. They won't even give him a shout yeah. out. No, no, no. It's from Pep's Place, a real restaurant. You hey, can tell find. me what you think of this idea, boys. Business idea, because you guys love this shit. You watch Shark Tank and all that shit. I'll go buy an aquarium. And I'm going to fill it with Country Time Lemonade Powder, and then I'm going to put a hose in there and make that good yellow drink. And then I'm going to throw that in the trunk of my car, which I will then crash into the foyer of a Burger King and then open the trunk and hang a sign out that says Griffin's Place. And yeah. then you can come there and get this lemonade-forward experience at Griffin's Place. 
br- I love catered that. by bur- the Burger King that I crashed my car into. Okay, here's my question. I'm looking at two different menus. Best Place okay. is offering a brownie dessert. If I <laughs> is that what well, it was? Best Place doesn't have that. It is very clearly a, a brownie dessert. They are under desserts. There's one option, and it looks like a brownie with some whipped cream on top of it. If I order from that Pest Place and I call them and I say I would like the apple co- the apple crisp, and they're like, "That's not on the menu." If you call Famous Dave's and say, "Hi, I'm calling for Peps Place," yeah. they will think you are an absolute maniac. There is no way they will know about this. Promotion. I'm just saying, if Peps Place is at Famous Dave's and Famous Dave's <laughs> has peach cobbler and apple crisp and a Dave's award winning bread pudding, I'm looking at the menu now in El Paso. I should be able to get those things from Peps Place. Why is Peps Place <laughs> limiting the things I can order when I know they have you, access? Because if you eat peach cobbler with Peps, you'll fuck. You'll die. Dwarf, you'll dude. fucking die. Dude, I wish so I had said that on the Pet Place menu. Like, th- we know that this isn't the only food on Earth, but it is the only food you can eat safely with Pepsi. We're going to restrict. You're not ready for the entire Famous Days menu. You can't handle it. The pro- a lot of um, people talk about Diet Coke and Mentos. It makes a big explosion. Not a lot of people talk about uh, Peepus does that with most foods. For years, we've known that Pepsi is the perfect complement to a variety of foods. But even though consumers n- know that food tastes better with Pepsi, that's how I talk when I'm saying all caps, better with Pepsi, they often still forget to order a beverage with their favorite meals, says Todd Kaplan, vice president of marketing of Pepsi, inventing an absolute fucking fabrication <laughs> that doesn't happen <laughs> for the for the convenience of his absolute uh, unhinged ghost restaurant. With the launch of Pep's Place, we've designed a new fast beverage restaurant yeah delivery concept that features a menu and experience literally built around the idea of what foods go best with Pepsi, allowing consumers at home to fully optimize their meals. We are confident that by doing this, everyone will agree and taste firsthand how well Pepsi goes with their favorite foods. Cool. Uh, so that's the news um, for for this week. Cool. Um, should we do another question? Yeah, I think so. I was going to do, there's like news in the uh, chicken sandwich wars, but I don't really feel like, I feel like things have been so stressful that like more conflict is not really what we need right I now. Okay. But just so you do know, uh, Pringles is making Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich flavored chips. Yeah, good. Huh. Cr- crisps. That's it. Crisps. That's all That's all we need sometimes. It's just that. Yeah. All right. You should just know that, that that's going to happen. Cool. And it's out there. Awesome. And also, Taco Bell said that it refuses to join the. It refuses to join the. Well, damn it, Juice! Course. I do actually need more details on that. Bun, mayo, chicken, pickle, bun. Sound familiar? Yeah. Does yeah. Yeah. Familiar? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Maybe not this because. Well, let me. You know what? Actually, I could tell you the story, but let me just play this brief documentary. Fuck. Prepared. Fuck. The Great Chicken War. The battles began where most tragedies do, with a bun. In 2019, a brioche bun carrying pickles, mayo, and chicken became an agent of disruption and desire. The chaos immediate, and the copycats inevitable. Same sandwich syndrome sprang up everywhere. People were forced to endure hours long waits for a taste. Journalists had to find new ways to describe this blah blah bun banality. The victims were many. But in chaos, a single meal dared to do the undoable, get naked. And so it was that Taco Bell's Naked Chicken Chalupa returned to menus nationwide. Unburdened by bonds, the fried chicken shell carried something greater than the sum of its ingredients. Imagination. Did it end the wars? No, of course not. But it did offer something better. A chalupa. So, Fuck, that's a you, good commercial. No, it's not it's, because you can't you can't say we're we're better than the chicken wars. So we've got our own little chicken war going on over here where we're the only combatants and we win. That's bullshit. It would be like if you saw two people shooting at each other and then you taped a gun to your head and you're like, I'm not in the war. I'm in a different war that I'm the only combatant in and I win gunhead war. So <laughs> I'm just saying that listen to them. Like, listen, Justin, you can't tell me that there is a strong, strong thread of truth to the listening to uh, journalists 
cut, talk about the blah 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 chicken sandwiches. I mean, I'm over. part of it. Yeah, we're I'm part, part of the, the problem, machine, aren't I, yeah. Trav? I mean, I'm part of the machine, so it's hard for me to have that kind of kind of distance. I will say this is a great quote from Liz Matthews, Taco Bell's chief food innovation officer. When you look at the industry, you see the same sandwich being introduced as new everywhere. But at Taco Bell, being a follower isn't our philosophy. We've listened to our fans. And we're confident this is the perfect time to bring back this fan favorite. You listened hey, to your fans. You followed your fans. So, Liz, you followed your fans and also followed yourself with the chalupa you did again. And also, you fucking didn't invent the taco. <laughs> you can't say that. You did. And it's, <sighs> this is probably not the best time to remind you it's not a chalupa, but I guess I'll go ahead and do that, too. It's you're in the chicken sandwich wars. Like, I don't know how, if you can't do a commercial about the chicken sandwich wars that ends with you revealing your chicken product, like that, that is also unacceptable. You're in the shit now, Taco Bell. Congratulations. You could have just, yeah, as, you're in the, you, you're in the, you could have just as easily not, like, you didn't have to do a commercial saying, fuck the chicken sandwich wars. Like, or it you could have just lived with you it. revealing that you'll now be selling like reasonably priced but durable work boots. If, you know, like, yeah. if they had made a commercial that didn't end with them announcing a product and it had just been these fucking losers <laughs> keep talking about their identical chicken sandwiches. Fuck that. Come get some Taco Bell, baby. We're going to Doritos blast some shit and you know you're going to be here for it. You're fucked up. I'm fucked up. Like, let's party. Ignore all these fucking squares. They don't know what they're doing. And it, but but we don't have anything new for you today. We just are so fucking tired of it, and we know you are too. Fucking Popeyes, fucking just do whatever you want. Like go eat a chicken sandwich, but like ch just chill for like a minute. Even talking about the chicken sandwich wars gives more credence to the idea that this exists. That this is because it is like a wild phenomena of like everyone just decided there was a war. <laughs> And then we all said there was well, a war. Justin, and then the it's war almost happened. like that's how it really works. Yeah. Huh. Now I want to talk about the chicken guars. It's where the uh, band guar yeah, yeah. primarily yeah, writes songs about chicken. Oh god, Justin's drowning. <laughs> this is trap. As I understand, it's this not is at what all. I'm doing is trap. Wait a little bit of that. It kind of sounds like the lead singer of Corn trying to make his kids laugh. <laughs> oh God! Is the word. Is the word. That's not what trap music is at all. <laughs> I want a much squad. squad. I want too much squad. squad. Maybe it's time for like an acoustic or like maybe more of a James Taylor vibe to the Munch Squad opening, a little less scary. Oh, Munch Squad. Thank you. Crunch so sweet. Um, <laughs> I've seen Munch and I've seen don't Squad. Don't fucking play in my playground, okay. baby. Come on. Okay, baby. I'm going to go then. I you have a what? junior then and then I have a full story. This first junior is from Sonic and it's just like the, the chicken sandwich wars are are expanding to new fronts. This is what cyber. I think of as- Now like, they're doing some cyber warfare. This is a cyber chicken sandwich <laughs> war. Now this one's popcorn chicken. Uh, from Sonic, they introduced the new limited time only popcorn chicken po' boy, huh. a new sandwich influenced by the bold fa flavor of Louisiana cuisine. Now, I did want to um, just the most word salad jumble of nonsense in this quote, announcing this um, from uh, Scott, the Veep of product innovation and development for Sonic. Um, Cajun delicacies are known for delicious blends of seasonings that culminate in excitement with every bite. Fuck yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. That's true. Hey, Good. that's true. Good. Good food. Yes. That's true of a lot of delicacies. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Wait. delicacy, the flavors make people what like people it. People are looking for in food is flavor. <laughs> oh, okay. With a smoky southern style mayo, the popcorn chicken po' boy spins a sonic staple that guests know and love with subtle notes of thyme, oregano, red pepper, and paprika, which complement the juicy tenderness in the chicken and bring out a harmony of flavors and a tasty, delicate spice level. <laughs> Can I please be done with my quote? Please, I can't. <laughs> Is that please enough? Please let me go. I want to go home and see my kids. Um, that's the end of Scott's quote. That is, uh, that's good. That sounds all right. Uh, that looks like a good sandwich. It's on a hinge. Slice roll, but you know, you know how we do it here on the squad. We're not just going to give you a new entry in the chicken sandwich wars because that's honestly 
It's a little sad. Broaster's in on it, by the way. Broaster, the popular manufacturer of gas station chicken <laughs> chicken cooking equipment, is like, we got a chicken sandwich machine for you. I'm not going to read you that story. Chuck E. Cheese. Ooh. Charles Entertainment Cheese and Munch's Make Believe Band have announced their first ever concert tour. And if Get I may out. say, what better time than now? Chuck E. Cheese, Charles Entertainment Cheese, the number one family entertainment, vi sorry, Chuck E. Cheese is the restaurant. Charles Entertainment Cheese is the, mouse. Is the gentleman. Yeah. Yes, thank you. The number one family entertainment venue. And Chuck E. Cheese isn't even the most, the biggest entertainment mouse. Like, no. he's maybe three. He's like a power three. Okay. Uh, they have uh, announced Chuck E. Cheese and Munch's Make Believe Band dropped a new album. What? Summer of Fun. And the iconic it's group will be hitting the road for their first ever concert tour. Is Munch's Make Believe Band Chuck E. Cheese's Rock of Fire Explosion? I honestly, I'm a, we grew up in like, you know, we grew up in a Billy Bob house. Right. You know, like, so I don't actually know. We've you know, only I'm, ever had Hydrox. I've never had Oreo before. <laughs> right. It's that kind of thing. It's that kind of thing. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to listen to this this track. I'm just saying, if y'all have never seen Billy, you put Billy Bob up against the Chuck E. Cheese any day of the week. Billy Bob, he seems approachable. Yeah, he seems like a kind of bear you could have a beer with. He's a big Chuck friendly Cheese, bear with a with a bird in a can, and he plays the. But then oh, Chuck E. Cheese scares the shit out of me. All the teens like are afraid of Five Nights at Freddy's, but I just can't do it. Because I am I I grew up in the shadow of this big, friendly hillbilly bear, and I love him so much. He I would never hurt boy. me. I trust that boy with my life. Now, I don't trust that wolf over there, stage left, no, or stage the wolf, right, the wolf with a puppet. Yeah, not even. Don't, don't trust yeah, him. Don't the trust wolf him. with a puppet. The wolf who is a puppet himself, who also has a puppet. Hard pass. No, 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 no. No, thank no, you. No, 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 no. Uh, good news, everybody. Don't worry. I did manage to secure some tracks yes. uh, from the new Chuck E. Cheese uh, joint. So let's just, let's just, I'm just going to let it rip. Hold on. So you get the idea. Well, right off the bat, can I acknowledge two things? Yeah. It slaps. Well, <laughs> slaps okay, and rips first, and trips and bops and fucking hits, and it hits so it, hard. It kind of feels like this song is about the end of COVID. Oh, well, <laughs> no, it, it doesn't kind of feel like that, Trav. <laughs> it is it that. A hundred percent Chuck <laughs> Charles Entertainment Cheese's tacit uh, acknowledgement of the existence of COVID and how glad he is that it has passed. By the way, fucking Charles, if I can speak to you over here for a minute, I saw your ads in fucking like May of 2020, yeah. dude, where you're showing people cleaning tables and you're like, we keep it clean so mom will be happy too. <laughs> Open for business. Charles. You've been partying nonstop, my friend. No question. No questions uh, on this. You've not been separate from anybody. You've been partying all, all year. But I also want to acknowledge that this song falls into my favorite subgenre of music, which is songs about other songs. When you have a song that's talking about like their favorite song on the radio or yeah. like, hey, DJ, turn that music up or like, oh, hey, this is not the song? greatest song in the world. Right, this exactly. is just right. Gotcha. Songs about other songs that are not the song that we're singing. 
is my favorite subgenre of music, and I can't believe Chuck E. Cheese just added a new track Another to that hit genre. To I, I feel like after hearing this, I have an image of how Charles Entertainment Cheese conducts himself on social media, and I'm not saying that he is like full blown anti vaxxer, but I definitely mm. think he's the type to just like be like, I'm just asking the questions. Oh, a hundred percent. Nothing wrong with 100%. this. I'm just asking questions. Oh, I just retweeted it to see what you guys thought about it. To see if it. you guys were inflamed to uh, discussion. Yes. Can I just real quick? I'm gonna this fucking album. This is like I thought it would be kind of a goof. This song, this album's twelve songs long. Okay. There's twelve different tracks on here. I'm gonna read you all the tracks, and you guys get to tell me which one you want to hear. Thirty seconds of "Song of Summer." We just, we just uh, uh, heard it was extremely good. Beach party bash, dog days of summer. Mm. Let's be friends. Yeah. Ooh, I dare you not to laugh. That sounds like kind of a, uh, you know how I like a lot of rap albums have like improv tracks. Oh like, yes, that sounds like kind of like that. You know what I mean? I dare you not to laugh. Stay positive, which I'm assuming is a cover of the Hold Steady song. Uh, Lend a helping hand. El Rey guitarista. Fantastic. Oh. Game on. Cr- crochet all day. Crochet huh. all day. Disco dancing dinosaur party. Fuck. Ooh. Chuck. And then the last song is called Chuck E. Cheese is all about fun by Chuck E. Cheese. Damn it, Justin. We can only pick one. I know. <laughs> Fuck. I, we'll, t- we'll we'll dip in on some of these. We'll we'll let you check out. Pick what you each get to pick one. I'll each let Justin, you pick one. I would like to hear Crochet All Day. I think that that's what everyone Crochet is Crochet All Day is for. bonkers. Recently, I've been spending a little more time at home, like a lot of people these days, hanging out on my own. <laughs> Filling my time with fun things is really not that tough, but finding that one new passion is proving to be rough. I've done puzzles, <laughs> tried juggling, coloring magic too. Stupid. Video Truly. chat is fun, especially when it's with you. Gaming, binge watching, I even tried croquet. But nothing has been quite as fun as my new hobby called crochet. Crochet all day. And your worries all melt away. It's better when you crochet. Crochet all day. That is bracing. Uh that is okay. The, so- the song's not great, but that that surprise sort of uh, key Modulation. shift at there at the back. Yeah, I did not see that, that kind of felt like a little Sally Hall yeah. chat. Okay, uh, Griff. Yeah. Oh God, what was the one about making you laugh? I dare you not to laugh. I mean, this is a comedy program. Hey Helen, want to play a game? Do you even have to ask? Of course, I want to play a game. Okay. This game is called I Dare You Not to Laugh. And the point of the game is to try to think of funny things to make the other person yeah. laugh. And- Hi, it's me, Justin McElroy. <laughs> I don't know what Charles is about to drop on us. It has been, by his admission, a long fucking yeah. year. Yep. So, and he may not. If you're able to keep a straight face without laughing, then you win. Oh, this sounds fun. All right, I'll go first. Let's see if you can withstand the silliness. I dare you not to laugh. I challenge you not to giggle. Do you think you can be serious? No smiling, not even a little. I dare you not to chuckle. Okay. Ho, ho, he, he, ha, ha. Uh-huh. Look at this funny giraffe. I dare you not to laugh. What? Oh, you'll never get me to laugh, Chucky. I'm complete. Start. W- when huh. does the funny shit start, Charles? Oh, you didn't hear, Gar Griffin? Please, serious. He said there was a picture of a funny That's giraffe a funny in the giraffe, somewhere. Griffin. Oh, yeah? How about a uh, platypus wearing a tutu? This pickle high five and a horse. An elephant riding a surfboard. This bumblebee eating s'mores. A kitty cat getting a haircut. This pig taking a bath. A monkey doing a cartwheel. I dare you not to laugh. Okay, so okay, it seems okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few things. It seems D- cats sometimes need to be groomed. So <laughs> that one was that one was out of that one was out of sight. 
I, 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 a platypus pointing tutu is fucking universally like very funny, and I won't. I funny, like the pickle high fiving a horse. Frankly, I that one. I was not expecting that. It also didn't fit the mold. Everything else was an animal doing something, and this was something doing something to an animal. To an animal. Which I, yeah, it's a, it's I like version the, of expectations. Yeah, it kind of feels like been so busy. <laughs> it feels like Charles's entire <laughs> definition of comedy is been so busy. It can be- okay, something doing something <laughs> to an animal. Yes. Been so busy, it can be frustrating For a breather so long I've been waiting And all the fun that I'm anticipating Hey, s- sorry, Charles, are you very busy or are you crocheting all the time? Yeah. <laughs> can you get your story straight, please? <laughs> well, one could be busy. Can't take it anymore, fun is just inside the door What are you doing? I'm playing video games. Well, are you having fun? This is my favorite game. I'm having the most fun ever. Awesome! You get to live another day. (laughs) This is like, sorry, Travis, say again. You get to live another day. (laughs) Yeah. I just, I I hate to just really monopolize the show like this, but I do want to know what Dinosaur uh, Disco Dance Party is. It's all about fun, for sure. I love this. Disco, dancing, dinosaur, party, disco, dancing. Does what it says on the tin. Party, disco, dancing, dinosaur, 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 party, disco, Wrote a novel, right. achieved distinction. All right, that's a highlight. I like that one quite a bit. That was yes, a, that was a I, good track. I, it kind of that, feels like they build a whole album around one single. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's going to be uh, hitting the road. Is he coming to to return to our actual story? Yeah. It is a, a celebration at all U.S. Chuck E. Cheese locations that begins May thirty first. That's today as the crow flies. Uh, the new summer fun path. I'm not going to read their promotion. It doesn't matter. Quote, we know our guests have missed seeing Chuck E in our stores. That's the other thing that's worth noting is like they got rid of all Chuck E. Cheese in all stores because mm-hmm. they're like kids. Hate they this hate this now. rat. But maybe he'll they'll come to his tour. Uh, he's been hard at work writing music and recording a new album that's sure to delight fans of all ages said someone there. <laughs> We're thrilled that Chuck E and the band are hitting the road to rock fans with our iconic fun tracks and signature sounds at beaches and parks across the country. And we're making it easy and affordable for families to keep the summer fun going with, you know, at Chuck E. Cheese. Here's the schedule. June 5th, Pier 60 Park at Popular Scientology Hub, Clearwater, <laughs> Florida. Huh. Show times: ten a.m., one p.m., three p.m. Damn, oh, three yeah. shows a day. That's it. That's three shows. Enjoy your costume, there, performers. It's going to be a rough one. Then they're taking the whole production, giving themselves a nice, comfortable week to get on over to Cumberland Park, Nashville, Tennessee, with three shows there. Music Headed to Philly. City. Music City. Uh, they're going to Philly and then Atlanta and then Texas. And there's nothing really funny. Wait, where in Te- Texas? Oh, I need to know which city in Texas, Justin, because do remember Sorry, I Dallas, d- bud. I, Dallas? I'll fucking drive that drive for Chuck. Yeah, you'll get there for Chuck. Um, so, yeah, he, he, he is officially Chuck E. Cheese is going on tour long before we are. <laughs> he is getting out there and playing those outdoor venues and uh, having the time of his life. So. Uh, really excited about that. God, that's good stuff. Get out there and see Chuck. I'm sure he'd love to see you. He's been, as he is apparently just telling everybody, really cooped up. Really cooped up. Ready to fuck. But trying a lot of new things, it sounds like. 
Yeah, he's trying a lot of new things. Yeah. Pretty much. He said he's open to anything. Yeah. <laughs> he has another song that didn't make the album called Char- um, <laughs> called da- Dr. Fauci Wouldn't Let Me Have My Fun Break. Uh, <laughs> and they had to cut that one for ob- very obvious reasons. Uh, there's another one called Dr. Fauci Enemy of Fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dr. Fauci Hates Pizza is another one that's on the album. <laughs> Dr. Fauci won't admit he's my dad, yeah. despite having a lot of paperwork. Uh, this is still an advice. Yeah, do you want to do one more question, maybe? <laughs> What's wrong, Justin? What happened? Okay. I forgot about this. I want to munch. Squad. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Ba 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 ba. Welcome to Munch Squad. This podcast is in a podcast profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Uh, a couple of people sent this one in. Um, uh, so thank you to uh, I know Stephen and Emily um, for sending sending that along. I very much appreciate it. Um, yeah. So Heinz in Canada. If you're in Canada and you're in Heinz, there's this new promotion called the Heinz bottleneck um this is only a canadian promotion okay okay i am in shuddering sh- with it. heinz when heinz gets in the scene when heinz, heinz gets, gets in the scene, so fucking they, nasty they make their presence yeah known. sometimes being they skin in, ed sheeran so mm-hmm. i can't wait to see yeah. what they've done now being stuck and exhausting and never-ending traffic heinz is a, fan, a a really amazing brand by the way i've been watching foods that build america did you ever see this one Got Campbell Scott narrating it as these very intense stories of like the Domino's brothers versus the Pizza Hut brothers with like and it's got reenactments. Ooh, I love it. It's like a if reenactment. you enjoy Munch Squad, I just want to give you the hardest possible plug for this show, which is like, we have to make the crust thicker. The people in New England hate it. It's like uh it's amazing. Amazing stuff. Uh anyway, but this is about Heinz. Through a partnership with Waze and Burger King. Heinz will be identifying those stuck in traffic, driving at the same speed as its slow pouring ketchup, which is 0.045 kilometers per hour, and satisfying their taste buds with Heinz ketchup and Impossible Whopper from Burger King. What? Say that? Say that one, that last one again. They're going to be satisfying their taste buds with Heinz ketchup and an Impossible Whopper from Burger King. 80% of Canadians say they will travel in 2021, and I would love to chill with that remaining 20 <laughs> real quick. <laughs> no, no, no. I have my year mapped out, and I will be uh, staying put. Uh, but most won't uh, cross international borders. Summer traffic is expected to be worse than usual this year, which is why Heinz is turning traffic into a good thing. Mm. So wait. The idea is if you're in traffic and you're moving slowly, Heinz has a way to identify that? From June 3rd to July 4th, those stuck in traffic who are driving as slow as Heinz ketchup will be served traffic-activated ads in the Waze app. What? And select slow-moving Canadians will be provided with this tasty summer combo of Heinz ketchup. Okay, <laughs> what the fuck? And an impossible offer for Burger King. How? This is going to this is going to destroy the Canadian infrastructure as we know it. Because if people know this, people are going to start it's collaborating. It's this thing where like you're driving slow, and then it's like. You'll be driving slow, but not slow enough as ketchup. And you'll, <laughs> you know what and I mean? And then it's like, guys, slow it down just a little bit. We almost got the ketchup, guys. It, the They have a mock up of what this would look like. And it's just a car with, you know, and the Waze app is there. And it just says at the top, we are giving you free ketchup for driving as slow as ketchup, <laughs> which I guess is how it'll. <sighs> Really go. Surprisingly, this is a quote. Surprisingly, many people don't know that Heinz pours out of our glass bottle at 0.045 kilometers per hour. That's a surprise to this. Oh, real you don't know person. that? The, a lot of people don't know that. Oh. And with more Canadians potentially on the road this summer, whether within their own cities or for weekend getaways, traffic is going to be a pain point that we all need to get used to again. 
We want to help our fans see that going slow isn't always a bad thing and reward them with the delicious, iconically slow pouring Heinz ketchup for those terrible traffic jams. <laughs> Huh. Says Daniel Gottlieb, <laughs> Associate Director of Brand Building and Innovation at Kraft Heinz Canada. These are the same maniacs, by the way, that made uh, pumpkin spice craft dinner. So I think this whole company needs to reevaluate what's going on up uh, there, I, up north. Uh, okay, so there are two very strong feelings. I need to finish the quote. Right okay, here. please. We are thrilled, thrilled to team up with Waze and also Burger King to bring Canadians and the meal synonymous with summer. And after sitting a week in traffic, we know there's nothing more sa satisfying than a delicious burger with Heinz ketchup. Now, why is it an impossible Whopper? Great question. I don't know okay. that. So here are the two overwhelming feelings I'm having. One okay. is inside. very much like, you know, people talk about has technology gone too far? And the idea that my phone can communicate the information not just of like where i am or what's happening i'm used to that but also that i'm going as slow as ketchup and someone mm. like hey travis is going as slow as ketchup send him that ad that feels like too much but more than that mm -hmm. it sounds like Kraft heinz canada has put a lot of work and capital into this and i'm not a hundred percent sure that they've thought about the return on investment of this this is what i actually think is i think this is my theory right, right i think that hides was like guys we have a really fucking good idea but if we tell you you have to promise not to cut us out of it <laughs> <laughs> because we are not essential to it at all but please it's such a good idea but you gotta promise not to steal it and kick us out of it and just do it together okay because it's really good <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I guess the speed of ketchup thing is kind of the hook on the whole. Yeah, but for so they what? Needed, they needed the iconography of ketchup. They needed. <laughs> I wish so it had just been <laughs> you win ketchup. Because that's what they've said. That every time it's like you win ketchup, and I guess a burger if you want that, <laughs> but you win ketchup. <laughs> Just go to the drive through at Canadian Burger and King they'll and give be you like, ketchup, which is already free at Burger King. I don't pay. Just open your pocket and, and goose it to the top, baby. You don't pay extra for the ketchup packets. It's not, there's no deal being made here. Well, that's how, that's why it's so hard for the Heinz company right now. Think about it, Travis. They've set up an expectation that their shit's always free and you don't, it has no value. Right. They should do it. The other, this should be a punishment. If you get clocked going as slow as ketchup from now on, you have to pay when you go to Burger <laughs> King and you want ketchup. Now it's incentive it, to not have traffic jams. Can we just like, I just like Heinz Canada is absolutely unhinged. Yeah. I just want to go. We're just going to go. You know what? I got a couple more that I just found. For the past. Is that okay? Well, you sure, guys sure, sure. take me on a journey. After searching through decades worth of old posts on forgotten blogs and scouring old tweets and forums, Heinz is releasing three new. This is from M March 15th, releasing three new sauce creations inspired by Canadians. Heinz Starchup. <laughs> what? <laughs> Savioli and Hanch. Hanch? <laughs> say, all, say all that shit. Was say that all that shit. I'm going to say it one more time. Heinz Tarchup. Tarchup. Was, wasabioli. Uh-huh. And Hanch. 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 <laughs> Hanch bothers me. Hanch. Hanch. This is my new boyfriend. Hanch. <laughs> this is Hanch. Hanch. This is my other boyfriend. Wasabioli. I can't eat it. There's too much Hanch on it. Hanch is your new daddy. I put it in Slack if you guys want to see. I got Hanch. So, <laughs> Hanch. Oh, Show Hanch the nice. respect Hanch deserves. We're, we're over here having a good time with Hanch while, like, my boy clowning <laughs> over here, Tarchup, is also pretty deep in the set. Hanch. Tarchup is a mixture. Okay. Tarchup is a mix of tartar sauce and Heinz ketchup. Uh -huh. It was shared in a decade old late night tweet by condiment mastermind Ariane from Toronto. Emma from Toronto turned an online wedding forum to remove wasabi and garlic aioli stain on her mother's vintage dress, 
unknowingly releasing the recipe for wasabi only. Right. Four years ago, while looking now, to subreddit to spice up his pizza order, Deep from Vancouver unsuspectingly cr- shared ham. Okay. Which is a combination of hot sauce and ranch. Okay, but here's the thing. Okay, I love a portmanteau. But if you look at tartar, sure, yeah. you look at tartar, right? It's the T-A-R powerful. of tartar sauce and the chup of ketchup. You look at wasabi oli. Oh, yeah, that, that's a lot of wasabi in there and some oli in there. There's a lot. There's only like one letter cut off of each. Hanch. <laughs> they took the H <laughs> off of hot sauce picante <laughs> and the rest is all ranch. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not fair. Ranch is most of the sauce, I'd bet, too, in hand. But yeah. hand, you wouldn't. You would look at that and be like, I'm going to guess ranch and hands. <laughs> like this, no. It's ham ranch. I, it, it could be anything. I don't know. It could be hoisin ranch. I, it's, <laughs> I hate it. You can you can shit all over them and their big ideas, but I would love to hear how you would mash these two bad boys up. <sighs> hot and hot, hot, hot and. Here's the ad. I got an ad for this when this happened. Millions of people post online every day. And some of them post about sauce. But little do they know, Heinz Ketchup is watching. We dug deep across the entire internet to find your old posts. And we turn them into condiments. Introducing three new sauces sourced from the most random corners of the internet. Heinz Crowdsourced. Catch from the 12th post in an archived subthread of people arguing about pizza. <laughs> Wasabioli, discovered on the advice page of a wedding fashion forum. <laughs> and Tarcha, posted on social media over 10 years ago. Then we shared the sauces with the actual people who unintentionally created them. And now you can try them too. Careful what you post. Big Ketchup is watching. All right. Like, what is, what are you trying to establish about your brand? <laughs> that they're clocking your shit 24-7? Because yet, just a couple months later, you'd reveal to me that they're watching the speed at which I'm driving and offering me free plant hamburgers in exchange. <laughs> yeah. I love this company. They're good. They're they. This is one of those rare cases where, like, yeah, go ahead and invade this shit out of my privacy. You have. A, I will give you access. I trust. I will them. give you access to my ch- my children's birth certificates if you keep cranking out the hits like this. Hanch. They need to change their name from Heinz to Hanch today. And if they, this is the new company. What is called Hanch. Their their uh their last one that they did was they asked people to draw ketchup and then they turned what they drew into custom ketchup bottles. I'm telling you, can't Heinz Canada is is, is all over it. They've got things. Okay, I think I'd go got, with hot, all hot Saunch. Oh, hot. Have you been thinking about this the good. whole time? Yes. That would explain your lack of contribution to the end. I've been working really hard to think about it. Let me give you a twist on that, Travis. I'm going to just twist it a little bit. Hand. <laughs> okay. okay. Did they um, pay the people that they stole these ideas from? Definitely not. Okay. 100% no. Now. They, pay, they, get, they made their dreams a reality. That's a payment, right? That's a payment greater than money, if you think about it. I wish Nerf would come out and be like, as we all know, Nerf bullets leave the guns at 95 miles an hour. So get out there, and if we t- see that you're driving 95 miles an hour, baby, we're going to send you some Nerf, and then just see how, how long it takes. Oh! From the depths of hell, you have unleashed me. Can we? I, I'm so excited to hear this one squad. Can I just do it really quick, really quick? Because I did text dad, hey, what was that cocktail you made with Fireball in it? And he responded, Cherry Coke Zero and Free Ball. And then he texted Fireball. <laughs> so. <laughs> He's already. But he couple, calls it. He calls it the free ball. Yeah. He's a couple free balls deep at this point. Yeah, um, I actually have like kind of a survey of oh, stuff. Good. Just like re- a lot of people have been sending them in. I haven't done one in, in a long time, <laughs> and so I just wanted to mention because uh, Munch Squad is renewed for another season. Oh, so nice! Really Congrats. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got brought back. Uh, so thanks to Ryan and Matt for submitting some of these. And uh, 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 so just real quick, just some quick, quick ones. All right. Okay. Number one. And I saw this on one of my main sites for news. And I was first like, how dare you? Okay. So this is a story. Papa John San Antonio provides teacher appreciation pizza party. Hey, you released a news story about how you did a pizza party? You're Papa John's. That's pretty cool. They donated pizzas ending the school year on a high note for two deserving schools in Edgewood ISD, Winston Elementary School and E.T. Wren Middle School. Donations were made in the form of pizza parties. And this is the reason I'm bringing this to you, because I, you're right, Griffin. The more I thought about it, I was like, you know, I think it's kind of wild to teach your own pizza horn. But this is why corporations do charity, right? They want they want the attention and are giving it to them, and the cycle is complete. I don't know. It's kind of a Some cynical kids way of get looking a free at it. Pizza I, I just... and the well, the wheel keeps on spinning. But here's the part where I had to stop for a second. Donations were made in the form of pizza parties, and a visit from Mister Slice, huh? The franchise mascot. Oh, hey, hey. Wait a minute. Huh? Wow. Can we all? Did we just? Sorry, did you say the Papa John's mascot? No, just Mr. Mr. Slice? Slice? I would actually say it's even wilder than that. This is a specific franchise in San Antonio that said, hey, do you know how Papa John's doesn't have a mascot? Fuck that. No, Travis. We do. No, Travis. No, actually, it says the franchise mascot. It's the mascot of Papa John's. Mr. Slice. Okay, I would argue saying the franchise means that location. No, sir. No, sir. I'm here to tell you that there is a mascot of Papa John's Pizza. Get the fuck out. And his name is Mr. Slice. I gotta look this up. What's he look like? His name is Mr. No, you don't need to look it up. I'm here. Just shut he's the fuck up. He's showing you. He's telling you. I'm telling you. I'm paying you a picture. His name is Mr. Slice. He is. His name is Mr. Guessed. Slice. His name, his name is, name is Mr. Mr. Slice. Sli he ha he's shaped like a giant piece of pizza. Yeah. And it looks a little like, because it's impossible to make a good triangle costume. He looks a little deflated. His name is Mr. Slice. And it, I will say it is kind of hilarious that they said part of our donation, part of our donation is a visit from Mr. Slice, the franchise mascot. <laughs> so if I search Mr. Slice Papa John's, the first result is a tweet from tw 2017 where papa john's is talking about a spotify playlist that mr slice put together okay that's the top result the w the one right after that is a papa john's mr slice costume for sale on ebay okay mm. this is your storied character this is your franchise mascot mr slice huh here's what's sus to me papa john resigned in summer 2018 so it feels like maybe a year before papa john's was like papa john shatner ain't long for this world we gotta get someone new in here fresh blood fresh meat fresh sauce <laughs> travis you just sent us a link to a video of someone dressed as mr slice making dough uh-huh slapping dough actually has the video describes it well wait He's this making... video is, this video was posted on my birthday 2010 yeah Huh. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. We have to move on to other stories, but do please we? Tweet at Papa, please tweet at Papa Johnson Shack and ask him where the fuck Mr. Slice is. I want to see these brands. Don't say fuck because the brands won't engage with you if you use profanity. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. But let's we talked about that on Jeffy's place. talking about Mr. You... Slice because where's Mr. Slice? <laughs> now, where are they hiding him? I, I just, one last thing that I will say to you, looking at all the pictures I can find of this costume. You would think a very large brand would figure out how to structure a mascot costume so that it doesn't look like a melting rocket pot. No, this is what I'm saying. It's in, it's a it's a bad costume, and I see why they killed him. But please bring him back. We all deserve it. it the, it's been a tough court for everybody. It doesn't seem like he's dead. It just seems like he's on the run, hiding in San Antonio. <laughs> Yeah, real quick, just want to, this isn't a joke. I have nothing to read about it. I just feel like it's really important that we're all united in trying to keep tabs on Kraft Heinz Canada mm -hmm. oh, no. because everybody knows that they have been getting buck wild uh, constantly, just constant buck wild attitudes. Um, and I do want to say that this week they decided to churn out six different flavor boosts oh. 
for KD, what? which is, of course, craft dinner. Uh huh. They got six different flavor boosts for you to just sort of enjoy. Um, and let's let's talk about them. First off, when they tweet about these, they have to do the tweet in English and in French, which cool is is is, is nice. I wish everybody had the multiple languages for everybody to enjoy this great news that they're doing some KD flavor boosts. First up is so you the thing is you make the KD. It's mac and cheese, by the way. Craft dinner. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You make the KD, and then you put in a flavor boost, like buffalo wings. Eh, okay. see that coming, don't we? Well, that's a good one. Though. Jalapeno. Okay. Yeah. All right. Spicy KD. Fun. Love, yeah. Love that. I want a KD it. that hurts. Get this one. Get this one. Poutine. Oh. Okay. There's, it makes sense for me. Yeah. And then we got ghost pepper. Ooh, oh, that's boy. A real, it feels a little... That's our third spicy one. I yeah. think they're saying it should be spicy. But why did, so. okay, I said I want a KD that hurts, but not KD that kills. Yeah, it's a painful, brutal KD. Next one, and this one, I y'all, I can't stop thinking about butter chicken. Oh, butter chicken Fuck KD. yes. Are Hell you yes. These are good boosts, Justin. The That's sixth, a good boost, if this, right? If the sixth one isn't wild, this is one of those rare munch squads where I'm like, yeah, you get it, Kraft. Yeah, well, it's cotton candy. Huh. <laughs> From downtown. Guys, you all, Kraft Heinz Canada can't fucking help themselves. No. They get so close to greatness, to immortality, and then it's just snatched away from them by something like KD Cotton. Doesn't that feel like someone announced six, and then they were like, we said five. No, we said five. Oh, fuck. We said fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, And there's no shame. Listen to this. Notre Nouveau flavor boost, baby. A papa transforma votre candy in sucre. All right, never mind. Let me try the English. Our new cotton candy flavor boost will turn your KD pink and sweet. Just make KD, stir in the flavor boost, and you got yourself dessert KD for your supper KD. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey. Can I just say right now, if I handed BB and Dot some fucking cotton candy KD, they'd lose it. They yeah. Okay, this is okay, wait a minute. I think I can Everybody, this is really important. Everybody needs to calm down, please. I think I can get them I think I can get them to send this KD to my house. <gasps> Hold on. All right, everybody. I don't want anybody to panic, but I'm very close. I've added it to my checkout thing. Okay. It's letting me input my address. You are okay. setting such a dangerous precedent. Why? Sorry, say again. You're setting such a dangerous precedent. You're ordering it right now, aren't you? I'm trying to, Travis. If somebody would stop distracting me. Uh, while Justin is ordering that, I just want everyone to know, because I saw some people tweeting about it and emailing about it, Snopes disproved Mayorio. Heinz Mayorio what? is not real. No, of course not. It got disproven by Snopes. Wait, what? What are there you There was a about? viral thing about Heinz releasing a combination sauce that was a combination of mayonnaise and Oreo, and it was Damn. it was not real. Of course that's real. Guys, I have terrible news. Oh, no, so. juice. Shipping not available for the selected address. Garbage. Do you know anyone in Canada that you could order? No. Oh. Shit. Wait, maybe stop podcasting yourself. Call the stop podcasting phone, yourself. I don't have their call, phone numbers. Call stop podcasting yourself HQ to say, we need you to do, we need you guys to become old timey rum runners. Yeah. But for, yeah. But, yeah. But, for, <laughs> but for sweet cheese. We'll meet you in um, Chicago. Last one, real quick. You guys ever go to Baskin Robbins? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, they got a lot of flavors. Slime. Get ready to slime your summer. What? At, B- at BR. With the warm weather rolling in and summer on the horizon, Baskin Robbins, don't you love fucking every one of these we've ever done for ice cream? They always have to be like, getting pretty warm outside. When the scoop be good? <laughs> <laughs> because it's to remind mid-February, you. Mid-February, these guys are like, you know, it'll be warm before you know it. Wouldn't the scoop be good? <laughs> Our cold <laughs> stuff Maybe. feels good on hot days. <laughs> hey, it's June. You know what that means? Scoop would be pretty good. Now, what? With now, if they wanted to get wild, hot ice cream for cold hot days. Hot ice cream for cold days. Thank you. With the warm weather rolling in, summer on the horizon. Basket Robbins is upping the ante on fun this June with a new sour berry slime topping Ooh. and a new flavor of the month, summertime lime. Mm. Sour berry slime is a bright green topping that adds a refreshingly sweet and slightly sour flavor Ooh. to any scoop or shake. 
Guests can slime their Baskin Robbins scoop or shake for 99 cents or take home their own bottle of sour berry slime home for $6.99. $6.99 sour berry slime. <laughs> $6.99 sour berry slime on my summertime lime? Sounds pretty fun. This is um, a playful. Sh- wait, hold on. Okay. Hey, shut up. A playful pair with sour berry slime. The June flavor of the month is a lively citrus scoop that's just begging to be slime. Oh, God. God oh, almighty. no. When you say it like that, <laughs> uh, take another pass, Baskin Robbins. You didn't get it. That sounds like something you would say to get kicked off of Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baskin Robbins is bringing out the kid in all of us <laughs> Jesus. this summer with the introduction of delicious and edible sour berry slime. I hope delicious it's edible. And- <laughs> delicious and inedible. What that means? <laughs> Candles. Yeah, put it all over. Don't, Don't eat, it. eat it. How does it taste? Delicious. We're excited to offer this unexpected and refreshing treat to help everyone get their slime on this summer. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Man, you go down to fucking Key West, those kids will get their slime on this summer, no question. Sure. Absolutely. Spring break. Take a break with your air. God, this is bad. Okay. Take a break from your everyday routine with an exciting and satisfyingly gooey new way <laughs> to, wow. to experience slime like never before. I should hope so. Hey, Derek, can we talk? I'm just reading the press release you're releasing. Are you okay? Are you uh, okay? Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm fine. He's <laughs> not, because the next thing he writes is sourberry slime brings Baskin Robbins summertime lime and other go-tos like rainbow sherbet and wild and reckless sherbet to the next level. Whether swirled into a shake or cascaded over a scoop, there's no way to go wrong when you slime your summer. Jeez. We've all. It's just begging to be slimed. We've all had our dad yell at us so loud about eating our gack that he blacked out. Well, no, you don't need that anymore. <laughs> Baskin Robbins got you with our extremely edible slime. You won't die from eating <laughs> this it. This is edible and delicious. Finally. What's it taste like? Doesn't matter. You can eat it and you won't die. We finally unlocked it. The code for slime. They say new summertime lime swirls a tangy lemon lime. <laughs> New summertime lime swirls a tangy lemon lime slime ribbon into a bright green and white citrus ice cream to combine the best tart and candied flavors of summer. Uh-huh. Shit, this is a what? good press release. <laughs> it's very why good do we keep why lime. do we keep letting old pervy Derek write the press releases? His rhymes are outstanding. I don't know what to he's tell you. He's amazing at words. Summertime rhymes. Yeah. Hey, do you, should I call? Should I call the media contact here and ask him why it's so horny? <laughs> hey, why so horny on this? Listen, story? Justin, nature is healing. <laughs> nature is healing. healing. It's extremely equilibrium, horny. edible slime, fantastic stuff, fantastic. So what now? Well, now's the time, Justin, where we take a deep, dark look into our souls and see how we're doing on this episode. How do you think it's going okay. so far, guys? Uh, overall, very, very good. Yeah, I would say, I would say yeah, that this very is good. the best episode we've ever done. One of the top episodes we've ever done. I have a quick. Um, I want to. This is like a new version of Munch Squad. Okay, where it's just for vegans and vegetarians. Oh. Okay, so and it's like it Munch Squad, but it, like the the combination of vowels is maybe a little bit different. Yeah, like my, what would be a good name for like light munch squad like a you know like a meat free mm-hmm. fake munch squad you know like with a k probably or like munch munch squad munch Why? squad with a k kind of anyway okay dun 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 <laughs> Why does no, 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 okay? No, no, no wait, hold on. Why does any of it have to be different? I want a munch squid. Squad. I want a munch squad. Squad. This is gonna freak you guys out. You guys know the naked chicken chalupa? Yeah, yeah sure, I love it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Listen to this. Oh. <laughs> They're doing. <laughs> oh, this is doing a meatless version of the naked, <laughs> of the naked chicken 
chalupa. It's so meaty. It's vegetarians are just like us, and they want to be dirt bags too sometimes. And this will let them simulate being absolute dirt bags. It's uh, it's really with, the main thing they miss out on. Yeah, is getting to live like straight have, up dirt. They bags. have ways of getting protein and all the strong beef power that I get when I eat a big hamburger. But what they don't usually get is that I feel like shit after I eat most meals. Yeah, listen, when vegans get drunk, they want to make food mistakes too. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. When they're exactly. real hungover, they want to get a rumbly tumbly that gives them the vegan shits later too. You know what I mean? So let's do this thing. Get Give everybody them. an equal opportunity to make bad life choices. The naked chalupa. This is actually called the naked chalupa with a crispy plant based shell. Awesome name. That's really the awesome actual name. name. Really it's described as a really new pops. menu innovation that gives vegetarian and veggie curious. Oh. <laughs> <Fans>. <laughs> I've been looking for a way to get into vegetables, and this is just the gateway drug I require. A new menu innovation that gives vegetarian and veggie curious fans everywhere reasons to celebrate. Oh! Now, hold on, wait. Is that spelled S H E L L, a break, or did it say do a share impression yeah. while you say this next part? Celebrate. Okay. No, celebrate. So it's, um, you want one? No problem. Because they're everywhere. Oh. In the kitchen of the Taco Bell at 2222 Barranca <laughs> Parkway Damn in Irvine, it. California. Damn it. You got me again, Justin. From now until June 27th, fucking Marty McFly. Go get you one. <laughs> Why would you? Go get you one. They're everywhere and here for good. As long as you can go back in time and make it to Irvine. Um. So that is happening there. Wendy's. Uh, Wait, wants what's to it? Dis what is it constituted? What is it? This is the most sinister thing about it is they don't say what it is. It's just you don't. You probably shouldn't worry about it. No, is what it I'm means. worried about it. I know what I know about, like the Impossible Burger and Satan and Tofu and all that jazz. But yeah, they'll never mention this. Fi this. Food yeah, don't I'm worry about it. Don't, don't, okay. don't worry. They're doing it. They're they're still working with Beyond Meat to make fake Taco Bell meat. So like, this is you don't need to sweat this. This is not. This is never going to be a going concern. Okay. You'll never hear about this thing again. You'll never see it again. Okay. Wendy's, on the other hand, is wants to get into the mix with uh, uh in the plant based category with um uh a spicy black bean burger. Ooh, right. Oh, man, sounds pretty good. But so uh, Aaron uh Bennett is the manager of culinary production innovation and uh her team uh helped create this uh this spicy new product meant for flexitarians huh i don't know if you guys know about this <laughs> this term but flexitarians uh according to john lee the vice president of culinary innovation who describes it as not your parents or your grandparents black bean burger no. so i mr lee i do agree that neither my parents nor my nanny or my grandmother barbara allen would have enjoyed a black bean burger <laughs> just like this <laughs> i can't we are in agreement hey can we not blow past the flexitarian thing is that somebody who sometimes eats vegetables and sometimes eats meat because there's another name for that there's a definitely another name for that it's omnivore it's a uh, yeah. It's a it's somebody that it centers on plant plant foods, but every once in a while you're like mm, have a bit of meat, please. That's nothing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you. I don't know what you want from me. I'm just here to tell you about the spicy black bean burger. Okay. Uh, um, they explored seventy to eighty different options during the process. Wow. And this is what they came to. We have a. This is. I tell you, man. Fucking John Lee, uh, who I don't know that we featured on the show before of uh, Bunch Squad. Uh, uh, which is, I should have mentioned earlier, it's a podcast within podcasts that profiles ladies and greatest brand eating. Um, John Lee is bringing it. He says, we have a lot of equity and a lot of strength and a lot of understanding in terms of what our customers want. Jesus. Part of it is flavor. Yeah. In the world of plant-based protein. Hey, wait, just, there are I'm going to stop you real quick, Justin. Is there a press release here in which a human person said that we had to study to make sure that our customers at a food place wanted to be able to taste the food? food. <laughs> okay, yeah. Got, got Part, listen to John Lee's bringing some fucking heat to you now. Part of it is flavor. In the world of plant-based protein, there are a lot of products out there that are just substitutes. Ooh. And they end up getting built-in sandwiches that I call okay. 
Oh, snap. That's amazing. They're so not good. flavorful. Yeah. They're bullshit. The, the way Aaron built this, it really is craveable. I, I don't I miss fucking, eating meat. I swear to I, God, on my dad's <laughs> grave. I swear on the grave of my father, John Lee Sr., this burger is craveable. May Christ strike me down <laughs> with his righteous fury. I'll bleed if I'm wrong. You, you you take this knife, you hold it in your hand, in your other hand, taste this burger. If I'm wrong, I want you to stab me directly in the heart. May COVID-19 be supplanted by a far more vicious COVID-2022 that wipes humanity from the face of the earth. But God damn it, this is craveable. I love this fucking burger and I don't, I don't miss eating meat. When I eat that spicy black bean burger, I don't so miss anything. Lady. Not even my ex-wife. I love this I burger. A, I don't miss a fucking second of it. It's not just a black bean, says John Lee. Okay. It's all the components together that give it the right texture, the right flavor, nutritional profile that we felt good about. Now we're focused on taste first. I mean, no doubt no, no about it. Big T, little in, is what I call it. Why? Wait, what? I don't. Guys, I don't Big know what he means. Tea. No, say that again, because that was wild. Okay. That was a now we're focused on taste first. Make no doubt about it. Big T, little in is what I call it. Big. Get the taste right. Make sure it looks fantastic. Nutrition comes second. Oh, okay. 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 So, okay. Big taste. Little nutrition. Little nutrition. <laughs> That's gonna be the tagline of the spicy black bean burger. A big taste. And a little nutrition. <laughs> hey, hey, um, Lee, I think you're pushing the wrong thing here. No, no, no. I let him know that it tastes great and it's bad for you. Yeah, that's the uh, Yeah, you don't have to say that part. That's what we want you to skip over next time, buddy. So all these ingredients, okay, beyond the patty, <laughs> this is like the longest interview I've, it's an interview on QSR, the longest interview I've ever seen about a sandwich. Um, what are the odds that they call them to just get like a quick quote and he would not let them off the phone? Guys, I tell you, I fucking hate vegetables. Fucking hate them. <laughs> hate them. But this is, when I eat these, it doesn't make me want to barf like every other time I eat vegetables. I've no, never felt anything before. I held my own baby in my arms. I look at his face and I felt nothing. I took I one yawned. bite of this burger. I cried for the first time in my life oh, out of happiness. Beyond the patty, we wanted to focus, this is Aaron Bennett again. Beyond the patty, we want to really focus on having some texture and flavor contrast. As I mentioned, not wanting to have that mushy, boring yep. experience that we see in so many other places. So we added a lot of really nice, crisp, fresh produce. Hell yeah. Like onions and tomatoes and romaine lettuce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we have this really cool new ingredient, crispy chipotle jalapeno. Ooh. They're actually jalapenos. That are seasoned, which is like so weird that you have Wait. to specify that, Aaron. Yeah. Oh, these things, these jalapenos, they're actually jalapenos that are seasoned with a chipotle seasoning that perfectly complements the spicy, the spicy black bean patty itself. And we top it with chipotle sauce. And then they really come together in addition to nice, creamy, cool pepper jack cheese hell yeah hell yeah wait a oh, minute it's not bland it's not boring it's spicy is it vegan pepper jack cheese <laughs> no this guys listen it's not bland it's not boring it's spicy but i like to think of it as an approachable spice oh where you bite into it and you're like okay i can eat this <laughs> you know like when you're at the bar and you see an attractive person but they're not too attractive and okay you, and you're comfortable walking up and talking to them but then also if they reject you you're not too sad because they weren't that super attractive to begin with you get it you get it you look at a person you're like okay i can eat them you get was it, it was there a pr rep hovering over his shoulder and he was like, it's so spicy, it'll burn your asshole right <laughs> off. And they're like, no, 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 walk no, that no, back, walk no, no, that no, no, back. No. Okay, it's a, it's a, an approachable spice? Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Dave Thomas rose from his grave and tried to choke me and my family to death. This thing's so spicy. He said, this isn't my Wendy's anymore. You have to change the name. It's change it to Hell Hut. Because that's what you've done to my beloved brand. This fucking shit is spicy and craveable. Walk it back, walk it back just a little bit. Uh, it's back, an approachable. <laughs> no, that's what happened. Uh, it must be told. Dave Thomas rose from his grave and tried to fire What he meant to say was, uh, it's an approachable spice. Dave Thomas actually... 
rose from his grave to say this is a great addition to our menu it would pair great with a frosty it would really have to cool down your palate just 99 cents he busted out he said this is great for vegetarians and uh, god love our troops <laughs> so that it's it so not spicy it made me hate our troops oh fuck <laughs> no ignore him Don't ignore him. I have a clear shot take it Take it out. <laughs> God is dead, and this sandwich killed her. No, 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 no. I've seen the end. It was so hot I could see through time to the very collapse of the universe. This no, no, is no, all no. meaningless. Nothing matters. <laughs> Everything you do is pointless. We're all on a trajectory that was planned long before the invention of time. But do enjoy the frosty with it. You can dip your fries it, in it. It's delicious. He's right. It's craveable. The craveability is inarguable. We can all agree on that. <laughs> the sniper is nodding his head. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Single tear on his face. <laughs> you are my best I, friend. I, I have to take this shot, and I have to put you in the ground, but this burger is flavorful and craveable. But I'll marry your wife just like I promised. <laughs> I will, and I'll raise your son just like you would have wanted with lots of spicy foods. But not you, too spicy. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to stop the interview. Sir, did you just Morse code tap on the table that your butt got turned into a volcano by this hot, hot, spicy... No. No. These are actual jalapenos. Wink. This is the perfect triumvirate of butt problems where it's incredibly spicy with several new kinds of jalapenos that are actually jalapenos and mainly black beans and also made at Wendy's. So it's going to have a real a real kind of ribald bathroom uh, after the <laughs> yeah, party that sure. you should check out. Hey, listen, if anyone from Wendy's is listening, I'm actually a big fan of Wendy's. I love what you guys are doing. I love over Wendy's. There. I love them. Love them. Love I don't know why Justin said that you guys make people's butts hurt. I've never had that experience. The junior bacon they cheeseburger don't. is like my favorite thing. I don't know. I don't know why Justin. I'm said conflating that the time that I had diarrhea and had to drive quickly to Wendy's to throw away my underwear. But Wendy's was, was there food. for you in that moment, Justin. <laughs> yeah, that Justin, was, and I shouldn't be dragging them down. Wendy's for your especially mistakes, especially when they're churning out some of the most craveable menu options. Uh, I'm a vegan. <laughs> And I have a full time job. So my I'm brother called me. I'm looking for a burger that will fucking shatter my reality. <laughs> Evolution. What? <laughs> Step two. Huh? <laughs> Evolved. I want to munch too. <laughs> I want to munch more. <laughs> Welcome to Munch Squad Evolved. This is an what? evolution of Munch Squad, a podcast within a podcast. We profile the latest and greatest in brand eating. I Just cannot, I can no longer rely on the um, the quick service restaurants and their press departments to give me what I crave. So uh, I've decided to help help Munch Squad along a little bit with it with the evolve sort of a. This is called I call it People's Choice. This is Munch Squad People's Choice, and here's the deal. Okay, so welcome to Munch Squad Evolve no. People's Choice. <laughs> this is where uh, I here's the thing: I am a member of several different groups on Facebook devoted to restaurants in my area. Really, and I wanted to see what the people are saying. You know what I mean? Because you can listen to the press releases and what they say about the restaurants, but what are the people saying about the restaurants? That's what I'm okay. Okay. Do. Okay, so this is, fr I'm not even going to say what groups they're from, because honestly, I don't want people to join them and make things weird for everybody, because this is just for kind of like us West Virginians to get in there and dish on the dishes, as we say, uh -huh. in the groups. But mainly it's reviews. That's what people like okay. to leave. So you can kind of get a sense of uh, the good Taco Bell. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I hadn't been to Steak Escape in Kanawha City for quite a while and thought I would drive through and bring it home for dinner. So this, what this person has provided is a justification for why they have decided <laughs> to go to a restaurant and purchase food. It's so important, because a lot of restaurant reviews will leave out the fact that they wanted to buy right. food. While I was waiting in line, I saw a guy in front of m, m Mart sitting on the curb and shouting out to people who ignored him. Mm -hmm. 
seemed to be under some kind of influence. Mm. Suddenly, he was knocking on my window and told me that the food at this steak escape was bad. Oh, huh? no. And he said the last time he ate there, he was sick for a week. So, okay, let me tell you the, what this person has just described is a situation where they go to Stay uh -huh. they see someone yelling at people who won't believe them. They're ignoring them. And then they run and say, don't eat at the Stay Escape. It's bad. It's very relevant to this person's life. What's wonderful about this is it, it's a real world like example of why if somebody busted into wherever you are right now and said, I'm you from the future, don't right. do what you're about to do. You'd be like, okay, whatever. They're under the influence of something. This person is doing the Lord's work, trying to keep yeah, they're you saying, from like, getting listen, butt sick and <laughs> staying escape. I don't know how to catch people before they go in, so I'm just <laughs> waiting outside to tell people that it's like, don't eat at this one, okay? It made me really sick. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, except this person, this review writer says, I thought he was just a little nutty and continued to pay for my food what? and take it home. I continue to pay for my food and take it home. I had COVID in January and smell and taste are still not quite oh back. Boy. At home, I opened the sandwich wrapper and my grand escape looked fine. I took a bite and as I did, I got a whiff of the sandwich. <laughs> Whoa, that's the order that it took. I guess it... <laughs> there, is, there is like 20 comments on this review where, where people are like, please explain to me the mechanics <laughs> of I bit the sandwich and then later on I smell. Well, Justin, taste and smell are very good. Well, are not quite back, yeah. right? I took a bite and as I did, I got a whiff of the sandwich. I smelled it and then asked my granddaughter to see if it smelled okay to hey, her. Hey, here. <laughs> Get over here. Yeah. Hey, get over here and smell Mama's stinky sandwich. Oh yeah, that's. Hey, Mima. That smell smells fucking rancid, sandwich. Grandma. You should not eat that. I already did. Fuck. I already did. If only I could have smelled it before I ate it. Damn it. Ugh. It tastes fine. I I smelled it and then asked my granddaughter to see if it smelled okay to her. It says in parentheses, she knew nothing about the That's guy. Important. That is important. That is important. I was going to ask. I'm so glad yeah, that she She's not biased. biased. Yes. Although, I don't know how cool your life is. If that happened to me, as soon as I walked in the door, I would be telling my wife this incredible story. I met an story. angel today. Yeah. Except you're the villain in that story, aren't you? Because someone was waiting outside to tell you don't eat well, here. Well, that's the thing. And then you still and did. And if you went home, and I'm not just saying this specifically to, about Sydney, but if you went home and told your wife this story, and whoever you're telling the story to was not there to see it, their first thing is going to be, and you still did it? Like, because- Yeah, it's impossible. That's how I feel, person writing this comment. I smelled it, and then asked my granddaughter to see if it smelled okay to her. She knew nothing about the guy. She said, it smells like poop. Well, that's exactly what I thought when I smelled it. Or, in other words, bad meat. Damn it. The guy wasn't crazy after all. No. It was bad. I think this well, is a great example of a sign would have helped. Yeah. Because if that, if that gentleman had had a well-constructed sign that he had clearly spent some time working An on. An official-looking yes, sign. thank you. Maybe even framed? Right? Then you see that and you're like, well, this isn't a spur of the moment thing. This is clearly a real issue that this person is concerned about. Now, here's the problem I have. Here's the problem, though. If this person had decided to solve this problem with a sign, yes. We then, then it starts to raise the issue of if the sign's too good, uh huh. At what point are you like, I don't actually need to be a part of this equation. Yeah. Oh. And that bums you out because it's like, that's what I was planning on doing today. But instead I've made, you know, it's like a, a John Henry situation where like I've made myself. You could just put the sign there. Just put the sign yeah. there, right? And you don't need to even be there. And that's a, well, well, but the, then the chance, that's the chance of someone being sent out of that weird side door that all fast food places have to remove the sign. Yeah, you need and a defender, then, uh, uh, yeah. as, as, as a steward there. I mean, if the sign is too good, you could just start to think that it is sort of corporate warfare, like somebody yeah. from Beef Journey, like trying to di divert. Sorry, be Beef Journey. Yeah, yeah that's the main escape. competitor for Steak Escape. Oh, uh, okay. I'm got, looking got, got, at got, got, the got, Steak got. Escape menu. I've eaten at this restaurant before. We used to stop off there on our way to church and get a big sandwich mm -hmm. on the way there to help us get lots of calories. Praise the Lord. And I don't remember them 
completely fucking going over the deep end, but they have they have so many different fry disasters. They have an item called Feisty Amigo Fries. Huh, I don't think that's right. It's called Feisty Amigo Fries, and it's got grilled steak, jalapenos, cheddar cheese, and Mexican seasoning, and pico on de gallo, fries? and and, uh, and pico de gallo, and sour cream, and somewhere in there is fries. Somewhere that's in there's fries. I bet. You can't just take the contents of an entirely different dish and put it on fries and say, is this anything? Yeah. Mm, oh, boy. They also have something called a teriyaki crunch bowl. I bet that's good. Also, I bet that's really hey, good. Everybody trying to make that fry kind of thing a thing. That's what nachos are for. They're firm. You can lift up the whole thing. A fry mm. is a soggy boy. You can't pick up the whole thing. Let's keep it poutine for fries. Right. Yeah. I'm fine with that. That's everything okay. else on nachos. Yeah. Uh, one of the comments on this post, uh, I got food here like three weeks ago after waiting in line an hour. Ended up throwing it away. It was horrible. Damn. Billy, did you say an hour? An hour? It's take us game? Hey, Billy, come back. Are you telling me there was a moment where you'd been waiting a half hour? And you were like, I could do this again for Steak Escape. <laughs> for Steak Escape? Absolutely. I'm trying to decide now which one's worse, if you were in the drive-thru or if you were inside in line. Both are Both bad. Both are bad. Both are bad. Damn, they got a sandwich called the Feisty Amigo, too. It's the same toppings as the French fries. That's awesome. You got to get them together, right? Those are the Amigos. Yeah. Got to have the clutch that matches the, the all, dress. All the ones around here... Uh, Closed. The one on Fifth Avenue turned into a restaurant called Sabatino's, but now it's just closed. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, and Justin. Then, I just heard from corporate. Uh, the verbiage we're using is they escaped. <laughs> they escaped. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one at the mall transmogrified into a Charlie's cheesesteaks, which That's is easy. fine. It's an easy twist. Lateral, lateral sure. move. Worse fries, better chicken. They tenders. kept all the same employees because they already knew. <laughs> they already knew how to their way around. You remember a, at a Steak grill. Escape, the, there was a big thing there where they just had a big pile of potatoes, and then they had yep. the crusher that would turn them into steak fries, and mm -hmm. you would be like exciting chef's table and then you're like let me get some <laughs> spicy zany amigo fries please and they're like okay and you're like mm, let's see how this <laughs> sausage gets made and then you watch them shove the potato in there and then they're like <gasps> trying to crush it and you're like fuck i made them do this this hard potato hey, work dude, dude. I hate, ha, my name is Daniel. I work at Sink Escape and I hate when people order the fries. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of my job, when people God. order the fries. They bring you your, your That's feisty the amigo worst fries. when they order anything else. Anything else. When they bring you the feisty amigo fries just covered in flop sweat and you're like, I'm so fucking, if I'd have known, no, it's, it's okay. They make us crush the potatoes. I don't know why the potatoes aren't pre-crushed. That's how they do it everywhere else. It seems like a better way of doing it. <laughs> they come sliced everywhere. Everywhere else they come sliced at first. Potatoes are so firm. Fuck. I also remember Steak Escape had a gigantic container of seasoned salt out there awesome. for your fries. Because if to say, we don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> you have some idea. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Go for it. What a wild restaurant. And what a wild podcast it has been sure. today. Here on My Brother, My Brother and Me. Oh, we hope you've enjoyed yourself. We sure enjoyed uh, spending a little time with you. I hope your summer's going Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. buddy. I hope you're having a great time oh, out God. there. Slipping and sliding, I assume. Sorry, you know how you... What, why sure are you... Oh, my God. Why are you... My, wa my watch just keeps trying to talk to him. I'm going to throw uh, it across the fucking room. Are we getting Steak Escape today? <laughs> Justin, I went ahead and ordered Steak Escape on DoorDash. Something else I can help Order 500 Stop. sandwiches from Steak Stop. Escape. Watch. Watch. I'm not sure I understand. Start a tab at Steak Escape. Um, dun 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 dun. Yeah? Dun bu 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 Ba 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 who put the ba 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 in Munch Squad? Um, this I have a Munch Squad mini and then a full Munch Squad investigation. Okay, so we're gonna begin with this, uh, because this is kind of a special episode for us. Um, I don't know if you guys realize, but this is our Shark Week episode. Oh, good. Recording, you know, not releasing during Shark Week, obviously, but like recording during Shark Week. So if we seem a little observed. Yes, if you if we seem a little, you know, shark dub. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, we're not the only ones taking advantage because Sonic Drive-In is uh, also, did you know, by the way, that they're putting a Sonic in uh, next to the Walmart where the Bojangles used to be? Yeah. No. What a coup. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big glow up. <laughs> uh, so Sonic Drive-In introduced the new Shark Week Slush. Now, there's many different ways that this could have gone, but it ended up going the weirdest possible way. The limited time slush is a, if I told you guys that this is not a cheap cash in, but rather an opportunity, an attempt rather to capture the grace and beauty of sharks with a slushy drink, mm -hmm. you would not believe me, but that is exactly what has transpired here. The limited time only slush is a diorama of refreshing tropical flavor to delight the senses while diving into one of the discovery's most anticipated programs of the summer, Shark Week. How is it a diorama? Well, bud, the eye-catching Shark Week slush has layers of fun with real strawberries and two shark gummies oh. atop, atop an ice-cold blue coconut slush, creating a feeding frenzy for shark aficionados for two ninety nine, which I think we'll all agree is a steal. Uh, I've linked you a, a picture so you can see. Basically, you got a blue slush. Mm -hmm. You got a big... Big mound of cherry, and then uh, yeah, the two gummy sharks on top. Awesome, of yeah, no, it definitely looks like, like just sort of stagnant gore, uh, nest yeah. ne nestled atop some antifreeze. Yeah, yeah, we're excited to well, capture the beauty of shark. It, it looks like a lot of work for an underpaid employee. Yeah, no one's. Uh, they're never gonna look like this. So enjoy this picture. It'll ne you'll never see one like this in the wild. We're excited to capture the beauty of Shark Week and the awe-inspiring ocean life the program showcases in an exhilarating treat with a trifecta of flavors. It's worth noting those trifecta of flavors are blood, coconut, and shark gummy. <laughs> so we've really captured the spirit of the thing, says Scott the vice president of product innovation and development for Sonic, the beachy cool blue coconut slush lays a bright aquatic blue base down for shark gummy candies and juicy strawberries, mm. creating a vivid ocean scene within a slush for guests to celebrate both the magnificent creatures and the delicious fun of summer. So you're really celebrate, celebrate sharks, their very existence with this slushy. So that's it's just yet another way to honor sharks, and that's wonderful. But from one sea life, but but the thing about this slush that I want to be really clear about is it contains no shark. That is important. Not even a bit of shark. Right. No shark DNA is present. No, I mean, in we're this all drink. stardust, aren't we're we? We're all star stuff, man. Yeah, but you could say that this is a place where you wouldn't expect to find fish. One place you might expect to find fish is in a subway tuna Oh, soon. no. Oh, this yeah, is, for sure. This is ongoing? This is ongoing, folks. <laughs> this story will not die to catch you up. So, <laughs> the New York, New York Times did a test on subway tuna and said it's, uh, there is no tuna at all. Not even uh, the trace amounts of tuna that you'd expect to find in any one of us. There's no tuna in it at all this happened and everyone kind of looked at each other like so what do we do now <laughs> what do you want me to do with this information New York <laughs> what Times? do we do with this and, information and if i remember correctly the like head of subway or someone said like stood by their guns and said no it's tuna and they're like it's not subway yeah subway says it's a hundred it's absolutely tuna no question this story is ongoing this lawsuit uh started recently like in january um the, the <laughs> subway subway uh ceo <laughs> subway ceo said and this is a direct quote he absolutely eats subway's tuna sandwiches. oh he doesn't then no he's never had any of them <laughs> he no 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 he absolutely definitely eats subway sandwiches he says it's one of my two favorite sandwiches <laughs> not <laughs> what's the other one just say it's your favorite sandwich he said it's definitely tuna he said he absolutely eats them this is just hey listen one of this my... is just 101 if you're ever trying to get away with a crime and you're brought in for questioning don't start off with i definitely didn't kill him and I yeah. am absolutely not a murderer. So it's so they're saying it's tuna. How far are they are willing to go? They've launched a website. Yes. Called 
And the, the website is, let me get the URL for you. Jizzdomain.com. Can, it's jizzdomain, no, subwaytunifax.com. Oh so if you go to Subway Tunifax, you're going to see a huge banner. And it says, I'll just read it to you, even though I'm probably, um, this is probably propaganda, arguably. Subway tuna is real tuna. That's right. The truth is, Subway uses wild-caught skipjack tuna regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. A favorite among sub lovers, our tuna is and always has been high quality, premium, and 100% real. Now, we know there's been a lot of talk on this topic, including misinformation generated in the media, so we created this page to set forth the facts and help clarify any misunderstandings. Myth. The New York Times reported the Subway's premium fan favorite tuna wasn't actually tuna. <laughs> the New York Times said our kick-ass tuna isn't tuna. <laughs> and and I would actually argue what you stated is a truth. That, that is, is that did thing. happen. That's not a myth. Myth, the New York Times reported Subway's premium fan favorite tuna wasn't actually tuna. Truth, not true. <laughs> What actually happened is that the New York Times commissioned a test that couldn't detect tuna DNA in their oh, sample. Okay. But according to scientific experts, this is not unusual when testing cooked tuna, and it absolutely doesn't mean the sample that was tested contained zero tuna. Do you understand? Oh, wait, I'm yeah. getting kind of swayed. USA Today did an independent fact check of the New York Times conclusion, which found it lacked important context about the limitations of DNA testing in denatured proteins, which you would expect in a cooked down tuna product. I see. Okay. So by cooking the tuna, all that important tuna DNA. They cook the DNA right out of it. You, d you reduce it to create that strong tuna flavor. Now, they've got a chart here that shows the sort of the flow of it. Um, and it says at the top of the chart, Subway tuna is real tuna. Okay. <laughs> They're just really banging that drum extremely hard. One thing that would be, I feel like, used, the problem is, is that we're getting into this, like, we've always been at war with Eurasia territory, where the New York Times, our most respected publication, says, this is not tuna. And then somebody says, I believe you're mistaken. This is tuna. In fact, it's all tuna, baby. Like, there's no middle ground in this. One, one person just says, this is absolutely not tuna. And Subway says, oh, yeah, 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 it's tuna. What they lack in this in this entire web page is one picture of a man or woman catching a tuna and saying, this is going this is straight, straight to right. Subway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shipping this to Subway. You can watch. I need to, at this point, fucking GoPro a tuna throughout the processing until it's in someone's mouth. Yeah. That's what I need. I need that level. Does anybody read this on the planet Earth? <laughs> Does any sapient being on the planet Earth read this website and go, you know what I could fucking go for right now? <laughs> you know what I would crush right about now? I tell you, it's kind of convincing. You're now, Travis. Now, now listen, now, now listen, now listen, now listen, now listen. Am I saying I believe it was 100% tuna? No, of course not. Am I saying I believe it's 100% digestible? Yeah, sure. And now listen, guys. Here's where the plot fucking gets no. really ribbled. Here's where the plot gets really thick. The day, and I'm looking at the, the timestamps here. This story from Grace Dean and Business Insider about Subway launching the Tuna website is from July 14th. The day before, July 13th, in QSR magazine, which is my sort of go-to for quick service restaurant. I would trust them over anybody. More than the New York I mean, Times. They are the paper of record. Yeah, they, they're the New York Times of Burger Boys. Subway launches unprecedented campaign to support menu updates. Okay. There's It's called the Eat Fresh Refresh, which features more than 20 changes to core items. It will be supported with multi-platform content from Steph Curry, Serena Williams, uh, 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 Tom Brady. Is Wait, in are there. they all making sandwiches? It's an extraordinary group of athletes that reinforce the scope of these tremendous changes and embody the idea that to be fresh, 
you need to refresh. Hey, I'm Tom Brady, and this is my sandwich. It's two pieces of bread, and then there's a Sealy sort of mattress between them, and I just eat it. I eat all of it. Just so you guys don't think I'm making this up, I have one of these ads for you right here. It's six seconds long. Here we go. There's so much new at Subway, it won't fit in one ad. So they're sandwiching the sandwich ads between other ads. <laughs> That's a real one. Cool. That's a real ad, a real six second ad that Subway's doing. All right. Uh, with Charles Barkley is the new voice of, of Subway. I love that. He's made it. It it says here it will lend his humor and familiar tone as the new voice of Subway. I love that dude. Yeah. I like his familiar uh, tone. So it's a huge, I mean, like, there's all kinds of big changes. Like, they improve their turkey, ham, steak, and bacon. Pretty hmm. low bar. Well, and the rotisserie chicken, and they elevate. That's a that's lot of proteins. That's all of it, guys. Hey, well, no, Griffin, it's not all of it. Oh, because can you just can you, is, there, is there one protein conspicuously absent from that list? <laughs> oh, the tuna. It's perfect. Can't be improved. It's perfect and real, and we can't evolve it because it's so real that it's a hundred percent tuna. Where you know what? In fact. Now that we think about it, it's great that you brought out how much we fucking love our tuna because we need to fix our chicken and bacon and everything else with tuna. <laughs> so we'll live up to the standards that our 100% actual we, tuna is set. We asked Branson, we said, hey, while you're up there, keep your eyes out for space tuna because that's the only way it's getting better, my man. Something has got to help top this. Our other meats are, if they had come, you know what, honestly, now that I think about it, folks, if they had come for any of our other meats, the bacon, that's old belts. A hundred percent, it's old belts. <laughs> you got us. We've been doing plant-based chicken for 30 years, okay? It's all fake bullshit, but the tuna? Perfect. It's perfect and real, and it's real tuna. What's a shame is that Bransell could have found space tuna and come back and be like, good news, Subway, space tuna. It tastes 100% better and fresher. So go ahead and toss that on the menu. And then doc Dr. Subway was like, we fucking, we fuck, we can't. Because everybody will think it's a New York Times switcheroo swapperoni. Damn it. Fuck, why did the New York Times have to write that article so we can't put kick-ass space tuna in our sandwiches? Ugh. The optics, <laughs> Bransell, are Times, so you bad. blew it again. You blew it. Oh my God, this is a quote from the CEO of Subway. We've been working on this refresh for 15 to 16 months. And if you notice, the one thing we did not touch is our tuna. <laughs> People love our tuna. We're very proud of our tuna. So I think that's really the end of the story. <laughs> Guys, that's his quote. They're like quintupling down. And that comes, by the way, at the end of the story. <laughs> Business Insider I love it. Is the CEO like, oh, so the last thing I wanted to say is that the tuna is real and we're all agreed on that. And you could just put a period right there and that's the end of it. And I feel like the one thing we could all agree on is that our bacon has always been bad and hopefully now it's better and that our tuna is real. And that's uh, it. That's the whole I bit. love you. Bye. Oh, we're sorry about Jared, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. We should say still sorry about Jared. Still, for still sure. up on that one. But the tuna, perfect. Tuna, oh, baby. And um, I, I would say at this point, with absolute certainty, that the New York Times' is two biggest whoopsies was, in this order, number two, their full-throated endorsement of the war in Iraq. <laughs> and then number one, when they fucking lied about Subway's tuna for some reason. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. Dun, 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 Squad. Bum, 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 bum. Kind of Michael Giacchino uh, vibe here, and I'm yeah, taking I love it. it. No, listen, this is the most important Munch Squad that I've ever done. Jeez. And I'm trying to, I want to, you know how before Walter Cronkite, like, you remember when the, he was about to watch them open the moon door, yeah. and he was thinking, like, I got to say fucking something. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I gotta say and he said, like, shit. everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. Everybody Watch this. Shut Watch up. this fucking Listen thing. to the moon. I also wonder, like, if he was wondering if the moon guy was going to say something because he didn't want to talk oh, over right. him. You know what I mean? It would have been this is the This is like that moment. Popeyes launches nuggets. Calls for ceasefire <gasps> You're in the chicken you, wars. Oh, my God. Let's listen, before we comment on this and get too deep into it, let's just listen to the, this is what they're going with. 
Remember what happened when we launched the chicken sandwich? You see clips of them selling it. Chicken wars. Chicken wars. Chicken wars. But now we're ending the chicken wars. So what they're saying mm-hmm. is we know we walked into a room and kicked over the trash can and then left the room and then came back later. And we're like, you guys are, you guys, nobody cleaning this up yet. But now we're saying the chicken wars have ended. I, I will say this is, I mean, this might surprise some of you, but I don't know a lot about war and how it works and stuff. Yeah. But can you be like, can you start the war and then it's like, and now it's done and be like, what? I ugh, fine. You can't. No, Travis, you can't. You can't do that. You know, you can't just say we did a war, <laughs> but now we're tired of the war because we're doing a different thing. So the war's of the over. War. Yeah. I mean, I have, I played risk enough that I don't think you could, you can't invade some countries on risk and they'd be like, okay, I'm done now. So don't like, Come back at me, okay? The launch of our chicken sandwich was incredible. Yeah. And we're humbled by the amount of love and positive reviews. But at the same time, many claim that it started the chicken yeah. wars, said CMO Bruno Cardinale in a statement. Now it's time to say goodbye to the chicken wars and celebrate our new nuggets because we come in peace. Eight piece to be yeah, exact. Right. To prove it's serious about ending the chicken wars, the Popeyes we'll, Foundation. We'll pay a wear guild to everyone we killed. <laughs> the Popeyes Foundation purchased the cash equivalent of one million nuggets from Popeyes restaurants, as well as competing brands, McDonald's, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and Burger King. The foundation will donate the funds to Second Harvest Food Bank of Greater New Orleans and uh, uh Customers may visit the Popeyes Foundation website to donate, and Popeyes will match the contributions of up to $25,000. Oh, that's what okay. they're saying here, and it's very tough to parse. But my understanding is that they bought a million chicken nuggets and took them to a shelter. Is that what happened here? Could you read uh, it, it again? Because it does it's sound honestly, it's really it's so like, hard to follow. The Popeyes Foundation purchased the cash equivalent. Of one million nuggets. You can't do how is that money? You bought money of nugs? What are you talking about? Because the video that they have to accomplish uh, accompany this just shows a single Popeyes employee going like door to door at McDonald's and Wendy's and all these other places, just like I'd like to buy all the chicken nuggets you have because we're 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 the uh, some reason <laughs> I don't know I'll think of it. I'm like, I understand. I think that they're saying the Popeyes Foundation is donating the equivalent. But to say we purchased the cash equivalent of equivalent nuggets? Of it's uh, un. What could that mean? I mean, what are they saying? <laughs> they bought the cash equivalent of a million nuggets in nuggets at different stores and then donated the money. What are you saying? <laughs> Our hope is that today, guests who finally try our new chicken nuggets will say to themselves, Popeyes did it again. Started another war. Did Started another, another fucking war. war. A cuter war. We With would like chicken. to call for a ceasefire by invading a different country now. The, the cut, Bruno continued. This is, I think, where things really start to <laughs> <laughs> the rails. Those two things together, the product quality and the strong marketing campaign he's referring to here. Those two things together. They're really the recipe for the success of our brand. And I'm very confident we have those two ingredients here this okay. time with the nuggets. The product tastes amazing. Oh, good. The campaign, I think it's very, very timely, very relevant. It speaks to a cultural moment, an iconic moment that happened in America two years ago. We're tapping into that cultural moment and really delivering something that is relevant, that is unique to Popeyes and really puts Popeyes in the center of the conversation. Uh Uh Hey, the war's over, guys. We're bigger than this. 
but Popeyes did it, and we're in the middle of it, and we did it, and it's us, and the war's over, <laughs> guys. And we'll do it again. I think we all agree the war's over. <laughs> and we fucking won, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we have annex cluckers. <laughs> we have annex cluckers. All cluckers are now Popeyes. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the gall. The absolute wild thing about this, though, is that in like the late 80s, there were pizza wars, which was like an iconic thing, right? Yeah. And, and it feels like they want that again. And it could be, and I don't fucking know anymore. I don't, I don't know, know anymore. Can I, can I talk about something else yeah. real quick? This is unrelated, but I did want to mention it. Long John Silver's has partnered with Gathered Foods to debut plant based seafood. Huh. Okay. And the ad for this, there's an I- iconic ad, there's an ad for it, and it just says plant based seafood is now a thing. Awesome. Good. Nice. Oh, That's so about cool. as much earnestness as I want behind this announcement. Customers will be able to choose from two Long John Silver's classic menu items now with a plant based twist. Good catch, crab free cakes, which I would argue most cakes are. Yes. But Crab not, but not all you. cakes. Not all cakes are packed with 15 grams of plant-based protein per serving, and features lump crab meat taste. Mm. <laughs> what a what an appetizing concept! <laughs> okay, listen to what it literally says. It features lump crab meat tastes and texture, complemented with sweet peppers, green onions, parsley, and a kick of spice. If a fillet is what you're after, good catch fish free fillets are crispy, breaded, tender, flaky, white fish texture you're looking for. Are they skipping um, every third word in this announcement? <laughs> Our mission is to make the unique seafood experience from the coasts available to all, says Christopher Caldwell. <laughs> so we're mushing up a bunch of beans, <laughs> I guess. We're mushing up a bunch of beans and frying them because our mission is to bring seafood to the planet. We believe plant-based f- seafood furthers that mission by making Long John Summers accessible to guests who are hungry for more plant-based protein option. Um, it's also a great addition for fans of our classic sustainably sourced wild-caught fish who are curious about a new take on their seafood favorites. We're excited to set sail with Good Catch on this test. Um, I'm really curious, and uh, listeners, if you could tweet with the hashtag MBMBAM after this episode goes out. Uh, if you're vegan or vegetarian, um, or I mean, maybe you just don't eat fish uh, for sustainability or whatever reasons, how many of you have been longing to go to Long John Silver's <laughs> But there just weren't you options. My Long John Silver's in your. Oh, salivating. I wish. Oh, if only I could. You're, but there's no options. You just think about. You just think about the fact that they'll sell you a container of lard castoffs oh. for seventy five cents. <laughs> Crunchy lard castoffs. Oh, if only I could get those crunchins, but I can't. How many of just you want to get some? Hey, pl- like, hear this news. Yeah, crunchins have been vegan this whole time. I bet. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I have. How no many idea. of you hear this news and like? Before we even finished talking about it, there was just like a U-shaped puff of dust as you ran to your car, right? A U-shaped puff of dust as you ran to your car and then turned back around and ran the other way away (laughs) from your car, creating the U. That is the U-shaped puff of dust that you have left. Oh, yeah, they're committed. They're in five restaurants. Yeah, five different Long John Silvers. That's how you do it. They're in California. Well, yeah. <laughs> so they're bringing the the seafood and coastal experience to California. Right. <laughs> Thank God. Thank Give God. me that bean fish in the bread basket. You know what I mean? Like where we you know where we one. need it. I would. Um, and I'm not saying that this is true of everyone, but there's someone in uh, the bread basket, I say this, living in Ohio, that would walk up to the counter and say, like, yeah, I'll have the crab cakes. And they'd be like, do you want crab in that or not? And they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I just want to <laughs> see that play out. I just said crab cakes. Uh, I want the, what about crab free cakes? You mean cake? No, I, t- no. I said I want the crab cakes. Yeah, but with or without I, the crab. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> you know what makes me so mad about this, this fucking stupid segment? I would fucking annihilate some plant-based sure. chicken fish nuggets Why right not? now. I'd annihilate them. So hungry for it now. Thinking about that great white fish texture. We love that. I love that here. Flaky. 
What? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh, it's been too long. I want a munch squad. I want a munch squad. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a very brief podcast within a podcast which spent a lot of time talking about Jungle Cruise, which in hindsight was the right move. Yeah. Um, I have. If, if uh, we don't talk about it now, when are we going to talk about it? When, if not now, when? Last week when it was released? No. Don't be crazy. We can't go back in time. Don't be silly. We were busy talking about Halloween. We were talking about Halloween. Um, very, very briefly, Marble Slab Creamery has hot Cheetos milkshakes. But that I don't have a story. I just want to let you know that that's happening. Okay, thank you. You could, if you have one of those around you, you can go get some hot ice cream. <laughs> so there you go. Bojangles. Now you guys know the sad tale of Bojangles is it pertains to me personally, the, Justin. That the, the one near you closed. No, sir. The one near me got extremely popular. So popular, in fact, that. They had to redirect traffic, as I detailed in an episode of My Brother, My Brother, Me. They had to redirect traffic because there was such a massive line to go to Bojangles. And then they opened another one, and everybody's like, well, fuck this. There's two of them. <laughs> and somehow they they cannibalized each other's businesses to an extent that they both shut down. And now if I want to go to Bojangles, got to drive two hours to Lexington, hard pass. So they, um, this is why I'm angry about it because Bojangles has unleashed a new hand breaded chicken sandwich, and it's Whoa. just like I, but I, Popeyes what, just what, just last week uh, said we're sorry to start the war, but we're ending it now. Let there be peace. And Bojangles just stumbles drunkenly with no appreciation for what what balance the delicate ceasefire. That they are un unsettling. They're just like charging in here, like we got a new one too. Now it's big, like the others. To be fair to Bojangles, I would say there's no need for you that. Don't they they closed. They broke. But here's heart. what I'm saying: you don't have to. Is if I was in the war, right, and I really wanted to kill somebody, there was someone I really wanted to kill, and yeah. the other side was like, "Hey, how about a ceasefire?" I'd be like, "Uh, give me one oh, second. Kill this one. If you, yeah, oh, one quick. let me just." Ugh. I need one quick thing that can't be counted as a murder, and then the yeah, war can be I'll, over because I hate my friend Doug so I'll much. definitely so sign bad. that paper in just a second. I'll sign it, but I hey, that, they probably did that. Like, hey, we're about to quit and give up the war. Does anybody have anybody they really, <laughs> really, really wanted to kill before it will be a murder in a second? Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Okay, you have ten minutes. Okay, but that's it. How many? How many months after it? Do you think people would kill people they didn't like and just be like, oh, the war? Oh, the I war's didn't know. Over? over? Oh, that sorry, sucks, dude. Oh, don't tell. We don't have TV or internet or Dang. anything yet. So I just hadn't. I just, I hate my cousin Doug from Georgia so much. And I swear I heard Dang. him saying some, some stuff. He said he wanted to start. He said actually the words, I'm starting it back up. <laughs> yeah. Again. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I'm so a hero. I don't do and like, it. I got confused then. And I felt like I was doing a good thing. Shoot. Yeah. Do you think when, like, the people were having this terrible civil war that was pitting American against American, brother versus brother, do you think dad versus one of the dad. things they thought, dad versus dad, do you think one of the things they thought was like, well, this is so sad, no one will make jokes about it, at least, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So Boj, as as okay, this is I've just been reading the press release verbatim to this point. It's several <laughs> pages long. Let me skip. To, to, let me see. Uh, civil war, civil war, civil war. Brother versus brother. Dad versus dad. <laughs> Bojangles knows a thing or two about delicious, perfectly flavored chicken served right. So who better to give fans a chicken sandwich that is sure to please? That's from Chef Marshall Scarborough, Vice President of Menu and Culinary Innovation for Bojangles. And we could say with confidence, the Bo's chicken sandwich is so clucking good. Oh, God. You know it could only be Bojangles. I have um, one of my pet peeves is when people do that and they, like, take an obvious curse word and change it a little bit. Uh, because, like, it's clearly there so that everyone knows that he meant fucking good, right? So all you're doing is just muddying the waters. of Just say, oh. hey, in this press Chat. release for a Bojangles chicken sandwich, it's fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, you're not going to like the rest oh, of this press man. release. 
Listen to this extra de- description of the same chicken sandwich everyone has been releasing since Popeyes. Pillowed between the toasted and butter. I don't think you can. I don't think that counts. I don't think you can pillow it. Nope. It's pillowed between a toasted and buttered bakery bun. So the bakery. Okay. So it was baked in a bakery. Yep. Well, that's a hell of a thing. What a bun. <laughs> pillowed between a toasted and buttered bakery bun is a juicy marinated juicy. chicken breast. And juicy marinated chicken breast, hand breaded with crispy buttermilk coating and dusted with a secret mix of bold spices. It's a fucking chicken sandwich. We get it. Accompanying the chicken is a layer of creamy, zesty mayonnaise. Uh huh. Affixed, affixed, I say, with thick, thick cut dill pickles. It's a chicken sandwich. Our team had a blast perfecting this. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, me yeah. a pickle, buddy. You got it. Woo! Oh, man. I've eaten 12 of these things. <laughs> I'm having the time of my fucking life. Wee! They had a blast perfecting the sandwich. We can't wait. I don't miss my itself. kids at all. I'm not going home. I sleep here. I I'm going to pillow things. myself on this bun for a pillow. I'm pillowing myself on this pillow. One flavor packed bite will have even the most well-mannered person saying, that's so clucking good. Jesus Christ. What did you just, what the fuck did you just say? You're usually so well-mannered. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was just so clucking good. I'm kicking you out of seminary. Get out of here. (laughs) This is actually, this next one, maybe one of the most sort of soul-crunching things I've read on Munch Squad, and it's a pretty high bar at this point, but... I think I, I can't believe I had to say the thing about meddling in the affairs of dragons and yeah. also this. Staying one step ahead of the quote, so good you could put it on a t shirt, end quote, reaction this sandwich is bound to elicit. Bojangles did put it on a t shirt. Oh boy. And a tote bag oh, no. and a bucket hat. No. Fans of the brand can snag theirs here, and it is a non functioning link. It's not linked to anything. <laughs> so I guess I, I it I had to go to their actual just like website and they have like a bag and it says so clucking good on it. And then there's um a Bojangles retractable pen for 95 cents. So I can't, I do have to credit them for their reasonable prices on, uh, on this stuff. They got an airbrush koozie, koozie that says biscuit beach on it. Well, I do like that. <laughs> Wait, hold on. No, huh? it's, it's pretty good. They got t-shirt that says we're the real dill. Uh huh. And then there's like a lot of biscuit beach merch that biscuit I actually beach. need. Them. Greetings from biscuit Ooh. beach. It's a, it's a yellow top man. I'm getting, this please shirt. anyway i can't try these so let me know you know if you want to fuel the the chicken sandwich wars stir them back up again head on over to bojangles and or get it at the app you know they all have everybody's gonna have an app now dun, 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 dun. oh boy ah. dun, bum, 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 bum. Yum. i want a munch what was that that was nasty i want to dance monkeys i say munch you say squad i work for you i want a munch squad hey y'all man what just happened justin this one might be i just I don't know, man. No one's this making is, you do this, Justin. This one feels like I it is making me do it, but it's like the Arbor like this first off, public service announcement, the shakaroni is back, Papa John's. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go get your shakaroni. It's a it's a gigantic <laughs> it's a monstrous pepperoni pizza. One dollar of every purchase Shit. is goes to a uh, charity. It makes me um, so mad it's not macaroni. I forgot it was a pizza. Sorry, go no, on. No, it's a shakaroni. With cheese. So the chacaroni's back at Bobby Johnson. No, I want to tell you about... It's just really hard. This is just hard. Take your time. Okay. Guys Flavortown Kitchen uh-huh. partners with lifestyle brand Middle Class Fancy to debut the Rand Burger. Huh? Okay. This is... Th- I, I sadly understand this, and it is a okay. fucking wild, wild ride. So we're kind of in like, yes, yes, 
<laughs> Your Nyesha territory, is still territory I think, for sure. Yeah, because it's like I read it and I I read it several times and my brain couldn't put the chunks together yeah. in much the same way as Guy. I have no idea what this is. Okay. Okay. Can I take a stab? Yeah, take a stab. It's like it, it's like an Instagram joke account that like makes fun of Guy Fieri sometimes. And but now Guy Fieri's like, no, nah, let's collab. When? Collab when? Now. Am I close? You're basically got it. Middle class fancy is like an Instagram account. You know what I mean? Where it does meme jokes. Yeah. Okay. And memes um are like jokes <clears throat> that s- you need to- remove punchlines and substitute it with images you're familiar with. Yeah. If you need it, if that's a meme, right? So there's all your vocab that you need here. The world's most memeable chef, Guy Fieri, is taking his Flavor Town Kitchen, a delivery only restaurant brand powered by virtual dining concepts Jesus. to heights. What a what a food stew. Our words do. To new heights by partnering with the most iconic name in suburban meme culture, Middle Class Fancy. The partnership not only brings together two brands synonymous with memes, but also offers a new menu item, the Rand Burger, now available for a limited time only. Okay, listen, 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 listen. I, I'm listening. I know that in this day and age, this is like an, a really like trite observation to make, but imagine taking this press release back in time even just like 30 years and handing this to a human being and they would read it and be like, what if this is, this is, what is this? Did you cut up a bunch of words in a magazine and throw them into the air? And this is how they land. Like none of this makes sense. I get except it. for the fact I that understand. no, I, no, listen, get you get it because you understand individually yeah. what all these words mean. But without any context whatsoever, you could not put this together like sans context clues this these words mean nothing on their own um so middle so middle class fancy is a meme account for, from instagram and it does seem to credit people for their memes sometimes i i can't really give a definitive answer on that but they do dunk on guy fieri and guy fieri i guess loved the dunking so much that he wanted a collab Millions of followers view middle class fancy's unique perspective on the absurdities of suburban lifestyle, from jokes about air fryers to grilling battles. Integrating Guy Fieri's Flavor Town Kitchen into the middle class fancy universe led Fieri to naming a burger after their beloved character, Rand. Like Ayn Rand? So this is yeah. So this is like the first burger that is also an inside joke. You know what I mean? I started middle class fancy as an exaggerated version of the life I grew up around coming from a small town in Cedar Town, Georgia. It's a small town in Cedar Town, Georgia. That must be a pretty fucking small town. <laughs> it's like safety town. It's like safety town. I already had a different meme account where I put who I don't care about someone who is more successful than me because they post memes. I need to. That's a shame because to... there's a lot of people you've just described. I know. I ruled out a lot of people, huh? Sorry, I prefer books by authors. Wait, so people After make about... money from posting memes? A huge part of middle class fancy universe involves the restaurant experience as well. I'm beyond excited to work with Guy, and I know my audience will love what we have in store for them. It's, I mean, it's a burger. Here's here's the here's the quote from Guy Fieri, and I know this one isn't funny. I'm really struggling with it. I'm being honest about that, no. and that's worth something. It's vulnerable. Meme or no? Let me do my Guy Fieri voice. Oh yeah. no. Meme or no meme? Rand is a real dude and a formidable grill master, says Guy Fieri. So in recognition of his true backyard burger badassery, I'm allowing Rand a limited time only trip through Flavor Town. Jesus. Order up. That your guy Fieri, Justin. Yeah. Scares the shit out of me. <laughs> What's wrong with him? We can we can, we have time. We can sort of zero in on Do him on again. Him, it... Just say that again. Me or no me. Yeah, Rand that's all right. Stop, stop, stop. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a he wants to fight me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are the, are the very least challenge my preconceptions? Do you not do you not get the impression that Guy Fieri wants to fight food a lot? Oh, fight food? Yeah, it, that's yeah. interesting. I don't want to take this ham Sammy out back and kick its balls. Yeah, that's cool. That I get. <laughs> that I get. If he said, "I want," I named this burger after. 
I mean, the burger is named after a character on an Instagram meme feed. Yeah. What is happening? Well, it's 2021 and nothing means anything anymore. Well, no, this means something. This means something to me. Does it? Yeah. What's it That's mean fun- to you, Griffin? That's funny. When one funny thing does a funny thing with another funny thing, it's <laughs> good shit, man. Well, I mean, you can get it if you want to. You guys know about... You don't even need a restaurant to have a restaurant anymore. Guy Fear, that you get the idea like, like Flavortown Kitchen, this is not a rest this is not a building you can go to. You just tell Uber Eats you want it and Guy Fieri ships it to you or something. Something like that. Is there a yeah. hook? My favorite burger in Huntington yeah. is the Mr. Beast burger, which is delivered via a YouTube account called Mr. Beast. And he started a bunch of burger places. Hundreds! Throughout the U.S. Is he, That's the best burger in town. Is he, it's from this YouTube guy. Is he the one who gives people bunches of money and you watch Mr. it? Mr. Beast. And you think like, damn, this little dude's like a little publisher's clearinghouse. Look at this little, <laughs> this ge- little, look dude at this is, little gentleman. Yeah, he goes place to place. Sometimes he gets hunted by the FBI. And if the FBI catches him, he gives him 10,000 10, smackers. What? Or 100 Gs. Wow. Okay. Does the FBI need money? Well, it's not the whole FBI. It's just one guy. So, and I have to imagine he's like a disgraced FBI agent, right? Because well, I can't imagine they let their best people do this. At some point. But maybe. I don't know. All right. That's that's it. I mean, it's like, I, this is why I'm saying, and this is why I'm struggling with it. Like, I... F- you don't know if it's normal or not. It's not that I know if it's normal. It's like, I feel like the we have crossed some sort of... YouTube fighting lot. What? YouTube con? That could be it. It's like a it's like a dividing line where no, it's like more of like a we've broken the mimetic seal. So you the thing the fact that it is wild is the point. The cruelty is the point. You know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? It is why yes, that's right, it is wild. And that's why a lot of these products, they're not even like for sale in a wide reaching way. It's just like, yeah, we did a really stupid thing. What do you care about it? And that pushes you into a well and forces you to tweet about it. Or this something. is the you thing I mean? we, we have reached a point now where like the pendulum is going to swing back the other way. And pretty soon, like a big news story is going to be like McDonald's saying like, yeah, we're making a new burger and that's it. It's just a new burger and it has ingredients that we thought you would like. The only ca- human part of the fast, the casual dining industry anymore, the only human part is that there's everybody's doing a lot more plants. You can eat a lot of this, which seems good in my stupid opinion. You know, it seems good. Yeah. Plants. All right. That was a, so that was a, ch- that was a challenging one. It's a challenging one, right? Because I don't know. I don't know. Is that worth reporting? Is that a news story for Munch Squad? I don't know. Because the it's the point. The that is the point. You know what I mean? Not, it's it not the like it's, exception anymore. It is the rule. That exactly. Yeah, Trav. I mean, yeah. It doesn't require a me to do it. Like, yeah. Guy did his own Munch Squad kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like. I, I'll take this from you too. I'll yeah. tell you what would be an exciting one squad is if you could find a press release that was like this meme account tried to get Guy Fieri to do a burger with him. And Guy Fieri said, no, I'm not going to do that. That sounds too silly. I wish I could get, I mean, I've been trying, we've been trying to get Guy on the show for years. We got to partner with him. Got to partner with him. Maybe that's it. Maybe if we he had a great character, he could do a burger. My about. burger, my burger, and me. We'll All get right, two well, burgers. Okay, now you are now you are actually cooking with gas. You get two burgers and yourself. Um, that's it. Uh, it sounded like I would get three burgers. Nope, yeah, no, that's no, part of our. No, no, no. <laughs> <how> we get <laughs> you. Our marketing trick. You're the me. You're the me. It's my burger, my You're burger, me. And, me. It. and you have to eat both of them while guy watches. I got an idea for a new hot dog. Oh, called, really? Yeah, called Stink Dogs. Get at me, guy. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. Oh, unless you I like reach that. I like that. I like... Unless you make the con- the connection. I have a new idea for a hot dog called a not dog. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you what it is. It's an empty bun. All right. Do you get it? It's good. You can put whatever you want in there. It's your it's your uh, blue you sky. Put, but not a hot dog. No. Speaking of, speaking of which, huh? I want to tell you guys. Yesterday, I got hot dogs for dinner. Oh, ooh la la. Yeah, yeah thanks, right? And I got hot dogs for dinner, and there was an extra hot dog. I was like, you know, we ha- we had the whole nine yards, buns, the whole, the whole thing. thing. We ended up, I was cleaning up at the end of the night, 
right? Yeah. And I, I, there's a bag of buns, yeah. and I went to go store it. My wife, uh huh, my wife had put the one leftover hot dog we had, yeah, into the one remaining bun that we had, yeah. and then wrapped it back up in the hot dog bun bag. Huh. Cool. And left it on the counter. I like that. Have you ever heard of anything more treacherous in your entire life? I mean, okay, if you're at an outdoor picnic and you have to protect it from the elements, but I'm imagining you don't got buzz buzz flies in your kitchen. Where does that fit into the, like, procedures of food handling where, like, now you have this, and I didn't know about it. This is really important, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it's a bun in a bag. There's one bun in the bag left. Time to store this with buns. That is, yeah. I think that is the uh, the cat because if if uh, if it was my wife, my wife, thank you, and she put the hot dog in the bun and then loudly announced, "I'm going to wrap this up." That right, fine to let me know. But it, you gotta let you gotta let Justin know. You gotta let Justin know. Uh, it's the on the counter that also bothers me because I feel the people <sighs> of this world. Uh, on on the whole, have way too. They're too blasé about the old danger zone of of yes. food and uh, forty to one forty, folks. It's it's more than four hours. You gotta chuck it. You just broke it through the danger and zone. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes even then, I feel personally is pushing it. <laughs> where if I've been at a party and it's been like two hours, and I'm like, oh, we could just, oh, you know, nobody's picking at this anymore. Oh, if we could just go ahead and put this back in the old refrigerator. Oh, uh, this boy. Is, Travis, you've actually tied in beautifully to our next question. All right. Okay. I want a munch. Whoa. I want a munch. Welcome to Munch Squad, the podcast within a podcast, profiling the latest and greatest of brand eating. There is a, I mean, everyone decided to just like jack it back up. Like, the munch, my, my thing today that I'm going to say to you is the munch is back because people are going wild. Do you think they were, were they waiting? This could be where we saw, started to see like, you remember when it seemed like COVID was going away and we saw the push into like some of them like travel and some of those other sectors. And then it seemed like Delta was like back and then it's like, mm, maybe the stay at home brands are where we want to keep the bulk of our sort of interests. Yeah, that? sure. Sure. Yeah. I think this is kind of where we're at right now where it's like, every, this is a flush of people thinking like uh, time to get nasty again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, the the, the uh, chicken sandwich wars also sucked a lot of the oxygen out of the room. Yeah. Well, guess who's trying to start it back up. You're no. fucking kidding me. Taco Bell. What? Taco Bell is unleashing and it says unleash and they know. They know they're unleashing the crispy chicken sandwich. Taco Have they no. not already no. done this? Nationwide on September 2nd. You can't just do that. You, the words mean something, Taco Bell. Beginning September 2nd, Taco Bell's long awaited crispy chicken sandwich taco will be available nationwide at participating locations for a limited time. Not quite a sandwich, not quite a taco. It doesn't have to explain itself. It does. After locally testing earlier this year in Nashville and Charlotte to much success, the test kitchen masterminds knew it was time to go nationwide. Pull the trigger. It's fluffy. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a like minute. A Sorry. We've talked about this before. In episode 550, we talked about this. Yes, my friend. Yes. This is now nationwide. We have not talked about the the fact. Wait, five fifty. Yeah, bud. Yeah, this was the test. That was the test. Okay. It's it's here. And it's not fluffy like a sandwich, but folded like a. T it's fluffy like a sandwich, Griffin. Yeah. But it's folded like a taco. Mm? No. No, I stand by. I think what my position back then, looking at a picture of these bad boys now, which is that I would fuck them up proper. I'm looking at it again. I'm getting I hungry all over again. I would ruin these bad boys. <laughs> Whether the crispy chicken sandwich taco is a taco or a sandwich might just be the greatest debate of recent time. Oh, yeah. I can't might, think of guys, anything. It might just be, according to this press release, 
in 2021, whether this is a taco or a sandwich might just be the greatest debate mm-hmm. of recent time. And that's why Taco Bell has enlisted some of the brightest minds in the country to help fans. Die. James Carville? <laughs> now, now, listen. <laughs> It's me, Ben Shapiro. I say it's a sandwich. It's me. It's a sandwich. Wait, it's, it's a taco. Have uh, identity <laughs> politics. Is it sandwich? It's a sandwich. Ben Shapiro. Except I would need now to back to my to toilet say- where I live. <laughs> but I really need to be some way of saying that it's a. I need to find some way of saying it's a taco that reveals like. It is also the most brutal self demolishing own possible because that is his brand yeah. is like trying to chuck one he like try, he does an air ball and then it bounces off the rim and gives him a concussion. Um, so on, on September it's, 4th, it, it's, got, Bell- it's gotta be a taco because when I ate it, I got diarrhea for six hours, and that only happens when I eat tacos. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's right. On September 4th, Taco Bell will use two real college debate teams from the University of Georgia and Clemson University to go head to head in the name of Team It's a Sandwich and Team It's a Taco. Oh, boy. <laughs> and a third team, we Three, had a pizza boy. Pizza boy. <laughs> The great crispy chicken sandwich taco debate will air Saturday, September 4th Get out during the Georgia versus Clemson primetime college football game on NBC. Oh, record numbers. It's it's what they have done here is they have wandered into the chicken sandwich wars. That is what bothers and, me. And, yes. but, and while everybody else is like, ah, oh, a new opponent, a new contender enters the battlefield. But Taco Bell is like, hold up. Because we have our own drama that we need to like figure out first. Please don't don't go on the attack. Nobody else is allowed to announce a chicken taco until we figure out this shit and do some real soul searching. It's like it's like you can't decide if it's a taco or it's a it's a sandwich. Okay, well, one of them will enter you into will thrust you into an international conflict that has i will reiterate for maybe the dozenth time claimed human lives <laughs> again i feel like i'm losing it with this thing but people have died right. okay it's not a joke the, one of them enters you into that the other one is like i don't know it's another bad taco we did it or like it'll still be good i mean bad in the sense that like it's not a it's not a taco, but let's stop. I Please, just want to. Ju- no, 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 Travis. It's important that we take a beat here and appreciate what Justin just did, which is throw. Oh, I tried to like you threw your hat in the ring a little bit. I threw my hat in the ring. I mean, but it ain't a sandwich either. Ask Hodgman that somebody get Hodgman on the phone and ask him what this I, is. They want Hodgman though. They want Hodgman for free, Juice, and we're not gonna like that. Can- I'm gonna get, I'm gonna text it. Don't, I just it, don't know how I feel about the fact that uh, we've been doing Munch Squad now for a long time, and it's reached a point where the fact that Taco Bell has enlisted human beings and let's uh, human youths to debate whether a thing they made is a taco or a sandwich on live television. They should know. Yeah, I don't know I don't, why you're asking me. Right. It should bother me, but instead I'm just left empty inside and thinking like, well, yep, this is where we are. Where was this indecisiveness when they announced the naked chicken taco where the chicken was the was the the shell, the tortilla? Oh, they knew what they were doing. They made that. that, They made that fucking monstrosity. And they were like this, ladies and gentlemen, this, folks, this is definitely a taco right here. Well, just while we're here, I just want to mention a couple of other things. And I don't want to, like, outstay my welcome here with Munch Squad. But there's a lot going yeah. on. Okay. okay? Uh, Sonic is doing a lineup of wine-inspired slushes. Fuck yes. Excellent. Love Use. that. Fantastic. Boost free. Well, It's that thing of, like, I want to capture the, the feeling mm. of drinking frozen wine uh-huh. that doesn't get me drunk. Right. Yeah, I love that. St- I love that stinky fruit flavor. Um, they so got bad. strawberry frosé, red berry sangria, and peach bellini. That's not going to get confusing at all when people see it's that. Sh- well, why would it be confusing? It's just it's a peach bellini 
that doesn't have yeah, the yeah, alcohol yeah, yeah, in it. I mean, I mean, yeah, definitely. It's a sangria, uh, which I believe is only a term used for the alcoholic drink. Right. But not yes. that. It's not that one. No. And then I did want to, I just have one other thing to talk to you guys about. And that's that pumpkin month. Hell pumpkin yeah. month it's, it's coming up. Starbucks just decided to pop it off August 24th, which I think is ridiculous. Fuck you. We are a month away from calendar fall and a week away from Justin fall. And I, I don't think that this is the appropriate is. time. You're I think wrong. you need to start, wait till the beginning of Justin fall or calendar fall. You can fall. do it as this soon as August saying. 15th, says Travis. Incorrect. Fall, September 1st. Nope. Fall. August 15th. It is. That's matter. back to school season. No one back cares. Nobody matter. cares. PS, PSL. Hey, just for fun. Yeah. Geez, how many PSLs do you guys think Starbucks has sold since 2003? Since 2003, 1 billion. Uh-huh. Okay. I'll Perfect. say uh, 600 million. Wow. 500 million. Excellent Ooh, job. Thank Griffin. you. I still went over um, and lost. Yeah, he was over by 20%, Justin. That's not that good. La- Last year, if you'll remember, Starbucks had a 1 800 number. Do you guys remember this? Where you could call. Oh, and I remember. Like, yes. Of oh, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pumpkin jokes or something. Uh, today, there is a. This year, we got a pumpkin levometer. It's a quiz, and we're going to find out where you guys fall. Who wants to take the I quiz? Do. Griffin or Travis? Hey, please, me, me, me. Oh, perfect. Here we go. Which which would you get for a first tattoo, Trav? A heart shaped pumpkin? What? Uh huh. Okay. A heart shaped pumpkin? Yeah, you know, pumpkin has the shape of a heart. A PSL on your tongue so you can always hey, taste gross. it. A pumpkin cream cold brew goes here on your palm. Nope. Or a full flannel sleeve. Oh. Please try to answer honestly. Uh, I think of those four, full flannel sleeve. Okay. Th- that would be... Uh, It seems like all those would be something that a pumpkin fan would do. What would you do if your significant other proposed with a pumpkin cream cold brew? The fuck? Would you, would you take the drink and run? Would you say yes immediately? Pumpkin is my significant other. Oh, wow. Or post a photo in the Leaf Rakers Society ASAP. Huh. What? I think I'd take the what drink and run would be my honest answer. Can the fucking AI make this? It seems like it. it I kind of like thought this would be about, like, how much do you like pumpkin? Trev, what's the first thing you do after arriving at a pumpkin patch? Oh, take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> pumpkin oh. patch photo shoot? Give him pumpkin to talk about. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Is that a separate pumpkin answer? Pumpkin, pumpkin to talk photo about. shoot. Semicolon. Give them pumpkin to talk about. I was about. so worried that that was a separate answer. Pumpkin no, patch photo shoot. It, comma. Give them pumpkin to talk about. Comma. Okay. It says this. It's a semicolon actually. Pumpkin patch photo, which I don't think it's being properly used here, but whatever. It's a. It's it's a it's an AI cloud generated quiz. Spend hours hunting for the perfect pumpkin. Hours hunting for the perfect pumpkin. Okay. Um, Grab as many pumpkins as you can fit into your car, and then some. So I don't. Break, you tell me what that car? fucking means, Starbucks. Shatter yeah, my yeah, car's yeah. windows well, with the pressure, the internal pressure. I'm gonna duct tape them to the top, right? And then this one's the, probably the wildest one of all. Get your pumpkins and go. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, the, oh, yeah. so what this is implying is a very uh, mechanical, very austere pumpkin just like patch. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dutifully. Get yes. This pumpkins. is the pumpkin. No. No more chat. I'm leaving now to it's, return. I'll be honest, fellas. It's hard for me to move on from give them pumpkin to talk about. I mean, that's the answer. Give them pumpkin to talk about is really, really powerful. Good. Travis, it's your quiz. That's the answer. I wanted to reflect you as well, a person. If I get, first thing I do when I get to a pumpkin patch, I'm taking some photos for the gram to give them pumpkin to talk about. Of yeah. course. That's actually probably yeah. true. Something to Talk About by Bonnie Ray is a song about people Assuming spreading rumors that you and yeah. somebody else is 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 our lovers. Yeah. Yes. So, it, oh, so Griffin, are you saying that this is implying that I'm taking this photo shoot and people are gonna say like, are, is Travis fucking that pumpkin? I think it looks like in this picture he's fucking the pumpkin. Fucking yeah, that? that's what I do. You know that? You know that maybe American pumpkin. I think Travis is trying to recreate. I think, I think Travis yeah. put his dick in that pumpkin. Would you ever name your pet pumpkin? Awesome. Yeah. I I already did. Brb changing their name. Uh-huh. My pet is a pumpkin. Oh. No fourth answer provided. Excellent. Oh boy. So here's the 
<laughs> Again, would you name your pet pumpkin? I already did. BRB changing their name. My pet is a pumpkin. How are you supposed to judge your pumpkin love with these yeah, options? Yeah, where's the fourth one? Like, hypothetically, I would if that name fit with that particular pet. Yeah, if it's like seemed like a good name for. I, I guess my answer would be of those three uh, BRB, I'll have to change your name. Would you rather let a stranger hold your PSL or hold your baby? Wow. Jesus Christ. No third or fourth options provided. Um, I guess the answer would be that I'd let him hold my PSL because if they ran away with that, it's a lot easier to replace. Sure. Wait, is PSL penis leash? Yeah. Okay. Wait, what? what what's the S for there, Justin? Penis. <laughs> penis. <laughs> 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 Do you want to let him hold your PSL or your baby? Make oh, your well, choice. then it's definitely my PSL, if that's the case. Because <laughs> why else have it? Why else would I have it? <laughs> You're not going to hold your own no. PSL. That's perverted. That's not, why yeah. would I have that? It's for other people to hold. POV. POV. You're lost in a corn maze. Yeah. How are you getting out? <laughs> uh, and and this, one is, uh, this one's an essay answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But plan your plan your route. I'm probably not getting out TBH. Oh, no. Or follow the smell of penis leash <laughs> to the nearest <laughs> Starbucks. Well, I'm not a defeatist, so I guess I'm going to go with penis leash here. When the real answer to the third one would be just start charging forward through the yeah, coin. Just cross the horn. What pumpkin item would we most likely find in your closet? And it says, no judgment. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, a pair of shoes carved from actual pumpkins. Oh. <laughs> pumpkin fashion isn't my passion. A pumpkin onesie. Or a vintage pumpkin patchwork jacket. Oh, it's the vintage pumpkin patchwork jacket. Yeah, there there needs to like be more these. options in this quiz that's like, I don't actually really like the pumpkin spice. That's lattes. what the second one is. The second yeah. one was like, no, you know what? On second thought, I know I've made it pretty far through this quiz, but actually fuck pumpkins and not in a fun Trav, way. This is the last one. Okay, Trav, you make your way to the pumpkin prom. What move are you busting out? An organized fall flash mob. A series of perfect pumpkin pirouettes. Uh, the pop, lock, and pumpkin. Not my style. I'll be by the pumpkin punch it's bowl. It's that one. Not my style. I'll be by the pumpkin punch bowl. Uh, because if I'm being honest, I was always a little nervous at, at dances. Uh, but I did love punch. The results are in, Travis. Yeah? You are a secret pumpkin admirer. Okay. This is the second to least you can like. <laughs> <laughs> the second to least you can like pumpkins is Secret Pumpkin Admirer. Even though you don't fully embrace the pumpkin loving lifestyle, it's hard to ignore that tingly feeling you get inside whenever you get your hands on one. Again, by that we mean a pumpkin. Yeah. Get your hands on a pumpkin yeah. and you tingle. Don't worry. We won't tell if you don't want us to. It can be our little pumpkin spice filled. You can fuck that pumpkin until the cows come home and we're going to keep it quiet here at Starbucks. TM. That That is until you share this with your followers then it just says you can share it. Now, uh, what is the least you can like pumpkin there? Well, Trav, it's a scientific quiz. I can't just move the needle to where it points. Yeah, out. I would just love it if I like mean, the least option is just like, well, you fucking got us. Well, Hey, we got caramel macchiato still or whatever the <laughs> You fuck. hate this shit. Come in for a plain black coffee, okay? Um, so anyway, that's the Munch Quad.